listening to the bomb hole. <laughs> it's going to be very hot. It's going to be very uncomfortable for everybody. <laughs> the bomb hole. You're going to slide down in big hills. You know what I mean? On a big, nice burgundy snowboard. Okay, here we go again. We are back at the bomb hole. First episode ever in our new booth. And uh, the bomb hole is presented by Liquid Death and Pub Beer. Now, Stony Buds, how are we doing, my friend? I am so good, my dog. Always love to hear that. Now, to my left, we have Torgir Bergram. He's an Olympian, X Games, as well as Aaron Style medalist. And in the words of Zach Hale, literally the most athletic person I've ever met. We are talking washboard abs, quote unquote. Now, Torgir. How we doing, dog? <laughs> doing great, my dog. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I just want to get right into my personal favorite topic, and it is, you're from Norway, and if you look at this Norwegian snowboard population, you got Marcus Cleveland, you got Turje, you got Torstein, Stale. It's just, it's out of hand, the amount of talent coming from, from Norway. Now, what is your theory? Why are you guys so goddamn good at snowboarding? What the hell's going on over there? Just something in the water, dude. Is I don't it know. Viking blood? Or? Viking blood. Might it's not be, like yeah. the terrain's all insane. No. It kind of blows. So, like, when you snowboard on shitty slopes for your entire life, and then you hit, a, like, a good park, and perfectly built jumps and shit, it's just, like, everything becomes easy. It mm-hmm. feels like. First time I came over here, I went to Breckenridge in 2008 or something. And uh, it was just, like, you feel like you can do anything. Um, but... Also, dude, I think the culture is, like, the main reason why people are so good. Because, like, there's so many good snowboarders. People just want to snowboard all the time. And you don't want to be that guy who's just, like, the train's leaving and you're just stuck at the station, you know? Like, you want to keep up, which, I mean, I think that's, like, the main reason why, like, my friends have been, have gotten that good at snowboarding, you know? It's a very winter-minded culture, right? Oh, definitely. You can't do anything other than... Ski or snowboard, yeah. The one of the things that uh, I was talking to Canute about. Let's just let's give him a little air horn. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he was mentioning the fact that you guys are a population over in Norway of five million people. Now, if you compare that to the United States, we are somewhere roughly around three hundred and sixty million people. So just like think about what small of a fraction that is compared to the states, and then you take the fact that snowboarders are basically like, I remember Andreas Wig was like a, an A-list celebrity. Like, so, so if you're a professional snowboarder, you're on the news. Like even Knut was saying like, oh, in Norway, they'll know Torgir uh, on the news because it's like, you know, you, gr- you grow up, you start seeing that in, in popular culture basically, right? Yeah. I mean, snowboarding is still pretty small in, in Norway, but as soon as someone does like literally anything international, it gets like international recognition in, in any way, it's on the news. And then and people, like, people watch the news. People are, like, so in, into sports over there. Like, if you do anything, you're kind of just, like, everyone kind of knows it. Yeah, that's sick. You know what? Another thing that's cool when you go over there is you see, like, when it's snowing here, I feel like a lot of people just lock themselves inside their houses and are like, this goddamn snow. Like, everybody just, and you go to, like, you know, Scandinavia or, is Norway in Scandinavia? Yeah. 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 So, sorry for my ignorance there. Uh, but everybody's outside cross-country skiing or you know stuff like that yeah it's like a winter culture well i mean you kind of have to if you don't then like you're going to be inside all year almost it's like you have three months of summer and then the rest is like dark and wintry and cold so you get like kind of resilient to that shit and you just get out and do whatever you want you know they get their babies out in strollers oh yeah oh yeah everyone's outdoors just put them (laughs) in a down like freaking down jacket pants and just put them in the stroller and go winter Uh, well let's talk about your upbringing because i know um your dad had a super big influence in your life and and you have an older brother as well correct yes definitely so um my brother and i started snowboarding in 99 um we so my cousin had a snowboard and then my mom and dad bought that snowboard off of him for us to share so my older brother's regular i'm goofy so i had to ride with the tail first for the first year and uh, we were just we would just hike the the hill outside of the house. We didn't go to any resorts or anything like that. We just like we just hiked and uh, just got into snowboarding. And my brother and I snowboarded together for like the first ten years. He was super good, still is. And then we kind of 
kind of separated a little bit. And my dad, he just took us to all the contests and like, he came with me to European Open, Burton European Open in Locks, bought a snowboard, just learned how to ride and just like, just to hang with his kids, you know, which is sick. So yeah, definitely a big inspiration for me there. Should we give him a big old air horn? Oh, yeah. big old air horn. I heard he's got a uh, cool job that he does. Yeah, he works uh, for a tourism company. So, so he just he manages uh, pretty much like forty or fifty cabins in the like mountains in Norway. So, so he just hikes around, checks up, checks up on all these and like employees and shit uh, around those cabins, and just that's whenever he whenever he calls me, I know that he's like in the car driving to one of those spots, you know, like because that's the only like time that he has like time to get on the phone. And, uh, yeah, he just hikes around and stays in shape. Yeah, that's what uh, sounds like you, growing up. You had a very big outdoor culture, like, a lot of times on trails, like, trail running or... Yeah, definitely. Like, we, like, my family's a very, very active family. My mom used to do track, and she played handball and stuff like that. My dad, he was in the military for 15 years. Um, and uh, we've always been super, like, active uh and then when he started that job we actually went up to one of the cabins and and worked there for a month ran that cabin for a month which was dope i was like 12 maybe mm -hmm. um so yeah definitely a big outdoor guy love being outside and uh yeah it's like life's better outside it's mm -hmm. just it's just the way it is well i, I have a question for you i want to go on a little uh, sidebar here now your name is in english uh americanized is Torgir, yeah. right? If I was going to try to say that in Norwegian, uh, I'd like to do my best impersonation, and I want to see if I'm better than Buds. So mine would be uh, Torgir. It's not bad. Torge. Uh, yeah, Tor like, Torgir. Torge. Who's better? Ah, dude, Grandis is definitely a lot closer. Woo! I thought it was you pronounced got, Torge. You have to roll your R's. Oh. Torgir. Torge. Torgir. Yeah. Torge. I, I can't roll the R. <laughs> How do you guys say it? Give me a super Norwegian. Actual, the actual way to say it is Toidegade. Toidegade? Toidegade? Toidegade. That's wow. a tongue twister. And yeah. say the, la the full, full name. Toidegade. Bidegidem. Uh, you know what I realized? It sounds like these guys are talking in reverse. Have you ever yeah. heard them talk? It's like, they, it's like when you play it and then it's like you back a record up a camera. Going yeah, it's like a record going backwards. That's what your language sounds like. Exactly. How'd you get so good at English? I watched a lot of Family Guy, dude. Family Guy, <laughs> an air horn to Family Guy. <laughs> wow, I don't know, just like traveling, watching TV, and like, like no TV's dubbed in Norway, so you kind of you hear it, and you like you read the subtitles, and that's pretty much how we learn how to speak English wow. or understand it at least. When you first came over here, were you not as good? Well, and now not, I imagine, but not as good, but I can still speak. I yeah. can like get around, you know. But um, but I've spent a lot of time over here too, so that helps. Yeah, I mean, you sound perfect, right? So we went up to uh, Pyramid Gap this year, and y we were having a conversation. I, I know you're like an athlete. That's why I want to get into this kind of body mechanics conversation because you said something to me that was – your fundamentals are really good on a board first. I want to start off by saying that. Thank and you. We, we were talking about – I was talking about doing a cab nine or something, and you're like, basically, when I do a cab nine, I aim right off the lip. So essentially, you're goofy, so when you're doing a cab nine, you're coming up regular, and you're on your heel edge – and you're basically saying that you try to, you know, direct yourself right off the edge, off the lip. And that, for whatever reason, just was like, I've never thought about initiating a, a switch frontside spin and, you know, going the opposite direction so you don't hook. And so you, well, let's talk about that. Yeah, it's kind of like how I see all my tricks. Because if I go and drift left on a left spinning trick, mm -hmm then I'm not going to be able to stop that rotation when I land. So it's kind of like if, because if you're, if you're spinning that way and moving the same direction, it kind of like amplifies the, like that's what I feel, amplifies like the torque when you land. So if you go alley-oop, you kind of like, you cut out half of the, the G force almost, you know, like when you land, it's so much easier to land on your toes and be like ready for the next jump if I try to jump a little bit the other way. So it's kind of like, I don't know, that's just how I see it. And, and it worked really good for me. And then if I don't get a good setup turn and then drift left, I'm just like, yeah, this is not happening. I'm not going to land this, you know. That, that's, I love talking about this stuff too. Because another thing to think about when you do a little 
boomerang hook and you drift, which is how pretty much everybody spins, it makes a, a it makes a jump longer too. Yep. So when you're when you take a good straight initiation on a switch front side spin, you're gonna cut the distance of the jump down. But I like how you think about it, where you you're able to stop the G forces and just dig your toes in and and just ride away straight. That yeah. makes so much sense. All you Norwegians, it's out of control. Like watching the control. You know, huh? Stale was the first person I seen come straight at a backside spin. Yeah. And just like basically torsionally flex his board and yeah. zing it off the toe edge. Exactly. Yeah. We have a Patreon question right along the lines. Yeah, hit it. And if maybe you've answered it basically, but Casey Willax is asking, how does it feel to have the best back switch backside spin in the game? <laughs> how does he make his look more like yours? And I guess, is that the technique, the yeah. torsional? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Thank you, uh, first and foremost. Okay, I, 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 uh, yeah, I don't know if I have the back, best switch backside spin in the game. but um, So what are you saying? Um, a lot of people are saying that. Yeah, I like doing like smaller switch backside spins. But um, but yeah, just try and be cool off the takeoff. And uh, like as I said, just like aim it a little bit the other way, like alley oop it a little bit. And uh, I feel like that works for me. And then maybe yeah, just try and chill. That's like that's what I try to do. And I like when I'm in the air, just let it happen. Just relax. Huh? Yeah. So uh, <laughs> another thing too. I'd like to talk to you about because you are really good at spinning flat. What's your take on spinning flat versus spinning court? Honestly, I don't really think about it that much because like a lot of the time when you're spinning flat, it doesn't feel like you're spinning flat. A lot of time when you're corking, it feels like you're spinning flatter than you are. And it's just like, it's kind of one of those things that you just do whatever feels comfortable for you. Uh, I'm like, I'm a big, like I ride on feeling more than like the like mathematical, like, mm -hmm approach to it you know like when people like say like maxons or or a lot of the other dudes they they just like repeat the trick like 20 times like every day so like they know exactly what's going to happen but for me it's more like i know how to do it but it also needs to feel right and then if i do a trick that's really hard for me then I might do it like two or three times, but then I'm like done. I'm moving on. I'm doing something else. And that's that might have been one of like the downfalls of why I haven't maybe done better at more contests. I definitely probably could have. But um but yeah, it's like keeping the fun and like the good feeling of the tricks. I, that's like so important to me for sure. And then like the the cork versus flat, I don't really just mind it too much. I just like do whatever feels right, you know. See, I'm top heavy. Back in the day, I used to just cork no matter what I did. There you go. <laughs> That's why I was probably good at make twists, you know. So I always had a hard time with flat yeah. spins. That's me. I come into the jump. I'm like spin flat, spin flat, spin flat, and we're flipping. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> just instantly too top heavy. I'm flipping. Here we go. Totally, I love that. Oh, I think it's a good time for a guest question from Ooh. your team manager and his son, Mason. Here we go. Oh. What up, bomb hole? <laughs> Chilling here with Nunyo Biz and Kawaii. He's got a quick question for Tor Gear. What does Tor Gear mean in Norwegian? And also, um, in your cornucopia of incredible trickery, you have arguably one of the most stylish tricks that you kind of put down on big airs and even in the Olympics. Um, hoping to see that you know, in the backcountry and film for, you know, for real, I guess. But, um, where did you, where did you come up with this? You know, what, what inspo? Let's talk tricks here. Let's talk, let's get inside your head, inside your uh, thought process of where you're coming from for this incredible switchback five late method. See you dudes. He's in a wind tunnel, I think. He is on the beach <laughs> oh, in, in Kauai. Yeah, okay. That's, Couldn't be in a better place, really. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, great questions. Torgir actually means Thor's spear. Holy What's hell. What's that Thor to a hammer? Yeah, he had a hammer. And a spear? Yeah, well, that's the thing. Like, I kind of wanted to mean Thor's hammer, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't. So I'm, I'm kind of stuck with a spear. Nobody knows the spear, but, like, that's It's still badass, yeah. though. No, I mean... Thor's backup weapon is yeah. not a bad. Weapon. No, it's definitely not a bad, <laughs> yeah. not a bad weapon. But yeah, um, yeah he prefer the hammer though. I'll yeah, definitely you. prefer the hammer. Take the spear. Yeah, 
But I wouldn't prefer my name being Mjolnir, though. That's yeah. like his that's name. Ha- that's how you say like, Hammer? I'm, I'm like, I like Torgir more. Yeah. yeah. For sure. That would be really hard for Americans to say. Oh, yeah. Mjolnir. Mjolnir. <laughs> and uh, again, how many times have you talked about the Switchback 5, dude? Yeah. <laughs> that's like, kind of been a topic like, of conversation. Uh, here we go. <laughs> it's kind of your <laughs> legacy, huh? Is that what's up? <laughs> we, uh, we're only going to bring it up 14 to 15 more times yeah. throughout yeah. the episode. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. I tried to mix it up. I tried to do different tricks, but it just, like, seems to, like, People as soon want as it. you think you're out, they <laughs> pull you back in, you know? <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's kind of crazy. I don't know. I, uh, we were in the uh, South Fay for this, like, a stomping ground session. Charles Beckinsale makes a sick park there. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was just doing some switchback fives and, um, and then kind of accidentally yanked one. Because I was, like, spinning too fast or something. I think I was trying to slow it down. Because I watched uh, Christian Haller. He did one. Kind of like a, he just, like, pulled it back almost. Like a suit, like, more of a suitcase kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But looked really good. Uh, but then after I did that, like, uh, my buddy Stolle came up to me. And he was like, dude, do a proper method. It's going to be sick. And then uh, I tried that. And uh, and it uh, it worked. And I guess... Been doing them ever since. <laughs> Been beating that dead horse ever since. <laughs> oh my god, dude! No, I love it. You we, gotta keep you bringing it. To you know, it's like Reynolds has the front side flip. You got the switchback back. Yeah, method. exactly. Well, and method is such a classic trick on its own. If yeah. you can do that with it, I mean, geez. Your method at the end of a switchback five mid upside down is better yeah. than my straight going off of a jump <laughs> method. So why so. wouldn't you just keep throwing it, right? <laughs> Let's talk about the method though too, because this is a fun uh, hot topic. Where oh, that know, is a hot topic. Some people go inside the binding. That you know, we've been almost getting some death threats for saying that uh, outside the bindings is okay. It's true. Is it something where you need a European passport? What's your take on it? Uh, I think every, the to each his own kind of deal. You know, like if you want to grab middle, grab middle. If you want to grab in front, grab in front. I grab in front. Is Usually. there a preferred Scando way to do it? I do it in the front. I try to just get as long as I can, just, like, extend my back leg as far out as I can, uh, which is, like, way different from, like, the, like, Jamie Lynn iconic, yeah. like, more, like, American method, if you can call it that. I don't yeah. know if you can, but you guys call it Euro, so fuck it. I'm going to do it. it. <laughs> so, uh, but, yeah, definitely, like, my, like, method inspiration is definitely more, like, Nico Mueller, Terrier style. For sure. Sick. But, we actually um, have some prints of you doing a method over the Volcom Stone. Jump. There you go. The classic. Yeah, that'll classic uh, photo. be for sale. That's dope. Autograph that you're going to be hopefully autographing Hell for yeah, us. Hell <laughs> And uh, shot by Vernon Deck. It was, Give yeah. Air horn. Yeah, it's that one uh, drone shot. Yeah, yeah, the drone yeah, shot is you know sick. The shot. Yeah, super I like dope. that shot for sure. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Like Methods are always uh, like a topic of discussion. And you never, like, there's no right answer. Uh, not according to our listeners. All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I think it just comes down to what you can do and yeah. what feels good for you. And then you're just like, oh yeah, fuck that other kind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's go, let's talk Norway, uh, Viking blood. I want to go back to this because, you know, you guys have everybody, all the good guys. Who's, who's your favorite Norwegian? Favorite Norwegian? Border. Border. Got it. Well, I mean, JP was like my biggest inspiration growing up. Oh, Solberg. JP Solberg. Yeah. He was style, style god. god. Still yeah. is. I shouldn't say it was. Like his cat yes. nines were like the sickest trick that I like ever he's seen. He's dope. Yeah. And he's goofy. So do you have a soft spot for the goofy? Photo? Yeah, I guess kind of. Yeah. But um, yeah, there's so many good snowboarders, dude. Alex, the Austrian, Stale, Land. Like basically everyone. RK1. Yeah, RK1's pretty. Yeah. A lot, of good, a lot of good snowboarders, for you know sure. What I, I think you should bring back, I remember uh, JP used to wear a headband, mm. uh, just like, and no shirt. Yeah, and just, uh, the beat, baggiest The pants. baggiest <laughs> pants ever, and just be like back sevening giant park jump. Oh, yeah. I'd like to see that come out of retirement. That'd be a good That'd look. be good. Maybe RK1 headband. <laughs> That'd be a dope. Yeah, I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah, get some merch going. Yeah, free merch. pro bono. Yeah. Uh, who's the biggest underdog of the Norwegian snowboard community? Ooh. That's a tough one. Uh, you probably, yeah. Uh, there's this one guy, young dude now. Uh, his name is Christian Schumming. He, uh, from up north, super, like, insane style. He's kind of, like, baggy style, too. Like, like looks kind of gangster. Just started competing a little bit. But personally, I hope he starts filming, like, dope video parts because that dude is fucking good. What's his name again? Christian Schumming. Give him a little air horn. I feel like the baggy oh, yeah. style is just about to come off strong. Oh, yeah. 
Hell yeah. So uh, another thing you psycho Norwegians are known for is your cliff jumping. <laughs> we got to get into this. Um, the scrimp? The scrimp. <laughs> Let's talk about the scrimp. What's the scrimp? And explain what the scrimp <laughs> yeah. is and does it make it hurt less when you hit the water? No. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, you're, you're talking cliff jumping into water. Yes. Uh, yeah. So yeah. what's the scrimp? The scrimp, it's, uh, well, you, you kind of, you jump out, like, belly down, and then right when you hit the water, you kind of, like, you turn into a shrimp. <laughs> so, you, like, scrimp. you go, like, hands down, feet down, and then you try to make it, like, as smooth as possible. It's still, like, getting still rammed a belly. by a fucking yeah, bus, it's still dude. a it's belly so flop, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's heavy. People do that shit from like ninety I feet. I think up. I've seen footage of this now that you mentioned Insane. what it is. Yeah. So how wow. how are you guys also good at just chucking ass into water like that? It's like you and Stale, I see you have the footage, it's psycho. Yeah, I don't know, dude. We're just same, like culture. Everyone does it. You don't want to be the guy who's like sitting on the fucking grass over there drinking a beer, just like, Yeah, that was dope. Well, I can't do that shit, you know, like I got it. You guys want to get in the mix. You want to get some. You want, yeah, to, you want to get that. some. I can respect that. I got a couple other uh, Norway culture that I researched that I find interesting. Yeah. Um, taco night on Friday oh, is yeah. huge. Big taco. So what's, like, what's the story? Like somebody came up from Mexico, introduced a taco, and dude, you guys just they're went ham? not even close to being Mexican tacos. Oh, dude. they're not. No. Dude, this is the Norwegianist of the Norwegian tacos that you've ever seen, dude. It's like... It's like a tortilla. It's like a, a burrito. And then you put like minced meat in it and then a bunch of like veggies, like cucumbers and onions and like a bunch of like random lettuce and the sour cream and shit in there. And then, yeah, fold it up and eat it. And everyone does it every, every Friday, single right? Friday, dude. It's insane. Like they decorate the house and. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Sombreros. Sombreros. Mm. There's taco trucks. Yeah, dude. It's crazy, dude. It's, it's like honestly kind of weird. But, I mean, I mean, whatever floats your boat, I guess. <laughs> you know what I was, I was thinking about? Going back to the diving, you know what I was thinking about? Is, like, uh, you guys hit the water. Like, it, I think the reason you're able to do it is because you guys have Viking blood and you guys have harder heads. So you don't get <laughs> fucked up. You, know, you got that, like, <laughs> Thor. You got that Thor blood in you, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Dude, mean, the like, Vikings were the toughest of the toughest, right? Yeah, they kind of were. We spent, like, the entire winter trying to land on our feet and the entire summer trying to land on our heads. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be completely concussed. Yeah, it's, 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 like, you, you need a little, like, transition period in the fall just to, like, not go full, like, scrimp in, on the snow. How, what's the biggest scrimp jump you've done? Uh, dude, it's, like, 50-ish feet, Ooh. maybe. Like, I've done, like, the like, the army dive. A head dive from like sixty, which is oh kind of hard. With no, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just your head, like dome first, dude. Dome, like fucking, yeah. Sixty feet to dome. Do yeah. we have footage of this, buddy? Chance? Uh, maybe I'll try and. Dude, try you should and you find give some. us a couple dive yeah, clips. Yeah. Dude, so you do like in. six feet to dome, and it's like oh, I could yeah. imagine oh, yeah. sixty feet. Yeah, also, you got to pull your shoulders up, dude, and there's the like trick. bruise, like. Oh, dude. Oh, when yeah. you see somebody just like kind of lunge out and then just slap their legs to their side and go just dead sailor. Let's slap some respect. Yeah, on I'd like to get this move. video going. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. We're going to take a quick break to talk to you guys about an important topic, that topic being manscaping. Now, we recently received the Lawnmower 4.0 from the great folks over at Manscaped. And uh, how was your experience with that thing, Buds? Tell us about it. It's so nice. So let's talk about before and after. It must have been an absolute disaster down there. Are we talking like jungle, just full... Bird's nest. We're right? talking straight Amazon jungle. Okay, all nest, Before. all nest, no bird. Before. Is what we're talking. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you can't see the forest through the trees. Is exactly. That, is that exactly. The so now, now we're talking about some some big old trees showing yes. showing their ugly head. If you yeah, will. I used uh, the short guard here. Got busy. Uh, used their information uh, slow and low on the balls. Mm -hmm. And uh, great experience. And my significant other. Thanks, Manscaped, for sending this over. That's it's really a, it's almost a gift more for your significant other. If you're thinking about getting your lady a gift, or your if you're a woman thinking about getting your man a gift, or whatever relationship you're in, it's a great gift for anybody. So if you're interested in getting a Manscaped, head on over to Manscaped.com. Use promo code Bombhole for twenty percent off. And these things are unbelievable. I'm bald as a China doll down there right now. I've, <laughs> I've used other products. It is uh, nothing comes close. Your balls will thank you. 
Uh, smooth as eggs. You, you could went say. no guard. I went no guard. Uh, Just so risking it all. The blade. I no wanted problem. as low. I wanted low profile. Um, wow. You know, again, turf. Nothing. Exactly. I didn't Woo. want to go all nest no bird on them. I wanted. Uh, I wanted to add a, a couple extra. You know, add a little length if you if you trim down the lawn a little bit. You know, <laughs> yeah, perfect. Makes it look bigger. <laughs> that is true, huh? Did it work? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Perfect. So, you know what? This is great to travel with too. I mean, you don't have to be on the road anymore on these long snowboard trips and. Uh, end up at the end looking like you were uh, back at the Amazon jungle, right? Exactly. From, right? Yeah, you don't want to be in the jungle. Again, if you want to support the bomb hole and support your ball sack, head on over to manscaped.com. Use promo code bomb hole. Get yourself the lawnmower 4.0. 11 out of 10 recommend. Well, uh, what do you guys think about jumping into a little uh, name of that video part? Woo! Oh, dude. Let's do it. So name that video part is uh, unofficially sponsored by our painter, Colin Brophy. Uh, we're in a new studio. He came through and painted this place. He did a phenomenal job. If you're in Salt Lake City looking for a painter, look up Big Brof on Instagram. Uh, also, one of the best skateboarders in Salt Lake. So uh, support the homie, Big Brof. He's the man. Now, Tour Gear, confidence level, zero through ten. Name that video part. Yeah, like it depends so much, dude. If it's like a street rail part from like a newer ish movie, I'm gonna zero all day. But you gotta give if, us a number. If it's like uh yeah, all right, I'll go four. Four out of ten. That's respectable. respectable. Yeah. That's respectable. Okay. Here we go. Now you're looks extremely confused. Oh dude. Yeah, I'm going to disappoint you guys on this one. I don't know what it is. I have no idea, honestly. I award you no points, <laughs> and may God have mercy on your soul. So, You're over there mouthing I, the words. I, <laughs> I actually have a, uh, I have a hint to give it away, because this one, this one was from Canute. He kind of fucked you on that, because so, uh, I was asking him who I should ask. And this hint might help you out. It's old video. These guys were kids. Here we go. I hate backflips. I hate backflips. Mikko. Yeah, that is Mikkel Bang. Yep. That's Mikkel and Freddie Austin. That, it's not the song? In, yeah, that's No, the, White Balance. Yeah, White Balance. No way. That's it. <laughs> no, <laughs> dude. I watched that part so many times, dude. <laughs> Holy shit. That's he, a win. He's another Norwegian. Yeah, we're going to give you a win for that. He's a Norwegian that uh, I forgot to mention. Right? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't even realize. He's such a boss. Yeah, he is a boss. So what you got yourself here is a bomb hole cooler filled wow. with uh, bomb hole merch. Looks so good in black. What do we have? We got a uh, bomb hole coffee mug, white hat, bomb hole hoodie. Got some short stickers. All available. Where, buds? Bombhole.com. Exactly. Bud Diesel. That's so what's Bud up. Diesel That's is hard. a combination. Of, uh, I'm uh, Grand Diesel. He's Stony Buds. Bud Diesel is kind of a little combo platter. Oh, yeah. Will. Combo platter. Um, okay, let's get into the... Uh, this is for the listeners. At this point, you guys know the drill. If you know what video part this is, comment on Tour Gear's Instagram when the episode comes out to win a prize pack. Here we go. Okay, that was a childhood favorite video of mine. Dude, what, no, no, it was Was it? That's what it was. Really? Yep, that's the... Uh, Big L. It was Big yes. L. Yes. You grew up on that shit? Yeah, too? dude. Big that L was one so of the first movies too. that I bought. Thank you guys for playing... Name that video part. One thing I want to talk about is some of your contest results that are uh, notable. One in particular we were talking about uh, before in the Patreon interview, and your experience in X Games Norway seemed very special. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, that was kind of crazy. The day before, we rode slope style finals, and I knuckled the jump pretty bad, and then uh, my like heel was kind of fucked. Um, so I didn't know if I was going to ride. Uh, so like my brother came out, and then we just took a couple laps just to like feel it out. And then it was like, no, it's not working. And then. We went in, like, the physio guy just cut out a big hole in, in the insole of my, like, the footbed of my boot just to, like, so there was no pressure on the inside of my heel. And I was like, fuck, I got to try this. And then it kind of still hurt. And I was like, fuck, what do I do? Like, 
talk to my brother and he was just like, dude, dude, like it's one night you can like, like push through this. And I'm like, but I just, I can't land, you know, like, what do I do? It's like, well, land switch, like land on the other foot. And then I was, that was kind of like, all right, I guess, I guess that's what we're doing. And, uh, I ended up like falling a couple of times in the beginning and, um, like last two hits, I think I did like a backside 16, 20 and a, like a switch frontside triple cork 14, 40, which like bumped me up, uh, to get on the box, which was insane. And my whole family was there and like my, like grandma flew up from Spain to like come watch that one night. And, uh, yeah, it was pretty special for sure. And I heard, uh, Maybe you were crying and Stale was crying. Yeah, it was definitely some tears coming on. <laughs> it was kind of crazy, dude. Yeah, it was. It was like just the whole thing, you know, like because I, I wasn't gonna ride, and then I was gonna ride, and then it ended up turning out sick. And then two of the best like competitors ever on the box with me was like who was that? Mark McMorris and uh, Max Perot. And your grandmother got to see you. That's so special on the biggest stage there is. She must have been hyped. Yeah, she was pumped. She was really pumped. I bet. Let's give your grandmother a little air horn. Yeah, let's give her an air horn. Yes. Um, and was that a scaffolding jump? No, that it was wasn't. Aaron it was Stiles. So yeah. Aaron Styles the scaffolding. Yes. And you've done well in some Aaron Styles as well. Right? Yeah, yeah. I got in a couple of podiums at Aaron Style, which has been really cool. Is uh, that's been one of the main events that I've watched growing up, seeing like like T Rice and. Uh, that one that Kevin Pierce won when he did the Cap 12 was insane. And uh, Torstein's done well at him. And, and the first time I went to China, like Ulrich won where he drove the bus. I don't know if you guys have heard about that story. He got like super fucked up at the after party. And then we were driving to the club. And then the driver steps out to have a Siggy. Fucking Ulrich jumps in the front seat, starts driving the bus oh. downtown Beijing, dude. It was gnarly. Dude, he could get in some trouble. Well, he just went like 100 uh, feet, but still, it was pretty insane. Did the driver trip out? <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, he was, bet, dude. It was like screaming in Chinese. No one, didn't know, like, no one knew what he said, <laughs> but he was just like running out. Like, ah! You but, could probably end up in prison for that, I imagine, in, in yeah. China. And like a, like a bus full of professional snowboarders. <laughs> like everyone saw, like, that would yeah. be on the news, right? <laughs> Dude, uh, talking to Canute about your experience, I think it was at X Games, but when you were doing well in Big Air, everybody was like chanting your name, like Tor Gear, yeah. Tor Gear, Tor yeah. Gear. Must have been out of hand. Yeah, that was in. Uh, uh, I think he's probably talking about the X Games in downtown Oslo. Yeah, there were like fifteen thousand people in the stadium, and then there were fifteen, no, ten thousand people outside on this like grass hill. And, like, my last run at finals, they just, like, ev like 25,000 people just screaming <laughs> your name, dude. It was insane. Like, wow. Yeah, I did not know that 25,000 people knew my name. How, it, how is that experience at the top? You're like, okay, here we go. Yeah, like, you're like, insane, in, how's that dude? feel? <laughs> insane. That's you're strapping that's in. A, that's what we would call run through a wall type of feeling. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's similar to a bomb hole smelling salt type of feeling. Yeah, you get there. I can't even imagine if you're strapping in. That's a lot of pressure. Too, oh, though. dude, insane! You're like literally your Better whole land. body is shaking, dude. Yeah. It's insane. <laughs> and just like go, go just grenade like ba banana hook off yeah. the lip and just <laughs> <laughs> just get full on Tara Dakitas live at uh, New York. There. When she landed on the car. <laughs> yeah, when she landed on the car oh, on the God. street or whatever. Yeah, that that's was bad. insane. Actually, pretty funny story about jumping off the side of a scaffolding. Um, when we were in Beijing having a practice at, Aaron, at the Aaron Style Jump in the, like, Bird's Nest Olympic Stadium in Beijing, there's this, like, group of, like, dudes in suits and, like, bodyguards and stuff, like, standing around, like, looking at the jump. And we were like, what the fuck is this? Like, what, what's going on? So we walk over there, and it's fucking the governor. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger standing there. He's like really? looking up and he's like, oh my gosh, you, you guys are crazy. How do you calculate not jumping off the side of the jump? Like insane, dude. And he had the biggest freaking hands too. Like when you like shake his hand, it's like literally he's like your whole like. He's got banana fingers. Banana yeah. fingers. Get to insane. the chopper. Dude, you know, t if you know Terminator is watching you hit yeah, the wedge, Terminator. you're chucking row stuff mm -hmm. at that thing, huh? Woo. You're like fucking Terminator's watching. Let's so you said that. what's up to the Terminator? Yeah, yeah. See. Are yeah, you I shook his hand. That's awesome. Are you guys boys? Or? Yeah, you got his number? Yeah, I wouldn't say that, but yeah, <laughs> I met him. <laughs> <laughs> Dope. Well, he's my boy. I don't yeah. know if I'm his boy, but. No, you guys are boys. <laughs> yeah, <I> boys. <laughs> so uh, I think I'd like to ask a Patreon question right about now. Beautiful. And for you guys that are unfamiliar with the Patreon, uh, it is a huge support to us. 
We are a podcast funded by the people. So uh, if you're a Patreon member, thank you so much. It really helps us do this show and put all of our effort into it. It's I can't thank you guys enough. So um, with that, bud, so yeah, fire one off. Yeah, you guys are basically our family, and we really appreciate it. This one is from Seth Milano, and he asks, what's your favorite and least favorite send off a backcountry booter? Least favorite and favorite, like, trick? I imagine that's what he's asking. I believe send would be a, yeah. tr- a trick. Yep. Um, ooh. I'd go cab nine. Is your favorite or your least? Oh, yeah, that's my favorite. favorite. Okay. Yeah. Like, uh, if he's first go- first he, run cab nine? He goes cab nine. He, this guy's landing. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's like the, the go-to. That's your if move. it's kind of like a scary jump, I'll go cab nine. That's your safety move. Huh? Yeah, the, ki- the kind of. Wow. But um, least favorite would probably be like a front side 1080, maybe. This is just like a blind landing. You can't see shit. It's like you're gonna you're gonna go down before you get it. Like that's not an FT trick for sure. Yeah, especially in powder, I imagine. Yeah. Well, that brings us up to another question um, from Benjamin Weisner. What's your thoughts on quads? Should it be where the sport is heading? Do you know any riders who actually enjoy doing these kind of tricks? Well, like you can't you can't stop progression. Like, progression is a natural part of the sport. And if you try and, like, regulate it, then it's kind of like, what are you? You're like, then you're freestyle skiing, like aerials, you know? Like, they're not allowed to do these and, like, those tricks, you know? But snowboarding's supposed to be free. I don't know if, like, the judging criteria have to change or something like that, but, but that's just, like, you add another spin. Like, it used to be 720, then it got to 9, and then it got to 10, and it's just, like, the natural progression. We're definitely pushing it. But, dude, five years, there's going to be a five cork. You and think that'll go down? Oh, yeah. Fully. Dude, Big enough jump. You, huh? Did you see Marcus Cleveland at X Games? Yeah, he's like, just. He was like miles above the ground when he finished his quad. It's like he could have done one. And so he probably enjoys them when you're doing them well, like that. Yeah. Well, yeah, you, you enjoy the feeling of landing yeah. them for sure. Yeah, when you're in right there, away. it's kind of being in a like a. What is going on? I yeah, exactly. Im- I have no clue. I couldn't even imagine it. It's like being inside of a tornado. I yeah. <laughs> like, tornado. <that's- laughs> just throw me in the tornado machine, and that's what it's like. Yeah. That's I just don't know how you even figure out it's time to land. You know, yeah. it just seems crazy. I would ma- I recommend probably closing your eyes. I think that's kind of so, like- <laughs> Close your eyes, and you still land. His eyes are still shut. <laughs> Feel it, yeah. You go by smell on the quads. <laughs> <Smell>. <laughs> you're definitely going to want to make sure your smell is amplified for the quad. Oh, yeah. Sniffing salts, dude. Sniffing yeah. salt, crack one, Again, I, I want to see. I want to see Cleveland at the top X Games hitting a run-through-a-wall smelling salt, just <laughs> dropping. You know what I do have to say, though? Cleveland, the direction he's going with this back rodeo shit yeah. is my favorite big spin stuff i've seen lately he's doing what are they like 14s 12s he he's been doing like double back rodeo 12s a Dude. lot lately and he has different accesses up yeah. for him where it's like he just kind of slowly falls backwards into it it's yep. like kind of flat a little bit hybrid andreas wig kind of if you can like go that way in progression and like discover and like invent new accesses of spinning and reward that as a judge that would be sick. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Huh? Yeah, because I remember when Ulrich won the Aaron Style, he did like a double back rodeo 12. Mm-hmm. And like people were doing 14s, but he was like, he still won because it's such a crazy move, you know? I always feel when I watch uh, slope style, like the back rodeo spins, like a back rodeo nine to me is like so much cooler than a back 10. Oh, yeah. And it doesn't seem to get rewarded in the same way. No. And I wish, because it's like that trick actually initiating it is like so scary you're so blind for at a bunch of different points in it. oh yeah and yeah yeah it's like it's it's crazy how like some tricks are like contest tricks and some tricks are not you know like tricks are easy to land that's that's what people are gonna do you know mm-hmm. like when you go back to back 10 back 14 uh that's kind of like you're coming down you're landing you're right like you're like normal stance you can see the whole landing you know like it's easy to land but once you go like double back rodeo 12, you can't see shit. You're landing blind. You're landing switch. It's like you don't do that because like statistically you're going to fall more than you will on the back 14, you know. That makes sense. Yeah. 100%. I, I'm beating a dead horse here, but I, I always said like I love the Aaron style uh, format, how there's one spin under, uh, I don't know what it is. It was, it was five and down. Five and down. Yeah. And so I even think – realistically with what these guys are doing it could be nine and down on the big jumps definitely but it's almost like the mandatory straight air 
in in pipe, there should be one mandatory, you know, small small spin that's rewarded like the switchback five method, or you know, uh, maybe we will rumors of a switchback nine delay method. You know, that could be something that's rewarded more than a than a front fourteen. You know, whatever fourteen's yeah. not even that big of a spin. But. Yeah. But again, though, it's like kind of a slippery slope because like style is like so subjective and like it's just like, all right, if the judges like you, then you're going to score well, you know, and that there's going to be a lot of a lot of debate going around if they go back to that for sure. But I mean, I think it'd still be super sick, but if they can make features that don't allow you to do the harder mm. tricks, that could be another way to go. How do you, you know? do that? Make some fucked up shit. All right. I don't know. Like yeah. make like a huge hip. Like, yeah, there you what go. are you going to do? Backside air? Go truck big, flip. Right? That's it. Yeah. Alley oop. Mm -hmm. like, you can't go 1080 on a, no. like a 30 foot hip. And it's going to mm -hmm. look awesome to the people watching, yeah. too, just going huge. Yeah. And the quarter pipes, hits. too, I think they do a good job at that. Is that if you do, if you, if you have like a quarter pipe with the quarter pipe landing, like a full on quarter pipe in a course, then like you're not going to see the bigger tricks. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That's dope. That's a, that would be some good shit. Yeah. Kay. Like, I'd love to see that. Yeah, me but, too. I have a couple of my favorite clips uh, I'd like to get into. Maybe you can tell the story behind it. Uh, the first one I'm going to start with is uh, this front flip holding a phone here. Mm. So I'll play it. Uh, we don't, I don't have my normal. Yeah, we don't have your normal little shelf I'll here. Just hold it. But he's basically check. What are you doing? Checking the gram mid front flip? Or yeah. Are you actually just posting scrolling, here? Dude. Oh, you're, you're scrolling. Never stop scrolling. Oh, you're scrolling. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so what was the vibe on that? You're just kind of like cruising the gram and like in a photo. <laughs> yeah. Dude, just like you don't have to put your phone down to do a snowboard trick. <laughs> <laughs> Multitasking, dude. No, we were shooting this movie called uh, Offline for Nitro mm -hmm. and uh and Knut was like, well, for the intro, everyone he wanted everyone to do something while holding their phone. Um so I just figured like all right, front flips are fairly like easy to do while you can like because you can still like see where you're going kind of uh, you know what i mean so that's dope so that's the story behind that it's all the training for the dead sailor dive that's basically oh, yes. what you do exactly <laughs> uh you pretend Head like first. you're doing a dead sailor and then you just whip it around exactly <laughs> yeah i have one i have more of like a one speed front flip where it's like if i it doesn't matter it's either i'm doing one or i'm doing two yeah. <laughs> no or real nothing and then another one from that same movie <laughs> is uh you basically were hand planting Knut's board. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So you do a Miller flip, and for the listeners, woo, uh, Knut's doing a hand plant and direct, and uh, I heard that was kind of a wild situation. That where was getting completely bodied. Yeah, I was like this <laughs> close to getting my head chopped off on one of them. It was it was pretty gnarly because he was doing like he was chucking his like tail up in the air for me to plant. Ooh. And uh, you know steel edges are sharp. And uh, so I was trying to like pop and then get the pop just right to plant his board. And then I was going like too high a bunch of times. And I was like this, like a good, like six inches too high. And then I just tried to like not pop once. And I ended up like his, his tail was literally like, like right, like across Dude, my, it would have cut your throat. Oh, literally. Yeah. That would be, honestly, that'd be a legendary way to it go would out. Be a, oh yeah. If there was a way to go, that would be pretty. Legendary. How'd he die? Miller flip. <laughs> you <get> Samurai <laughs> edge Miller flip. You got an edge to the jugular. <laughs> RIP. <laughs> Dude. Cause I'm, remember when Taxwood, didn't he hit somebody at Brighton on the back of the leg? Oh. And it looked like he got bit by a shark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it looks like a samurai sword. Well, we always say, go fast, take chances. You can't get hurt in the air. That's actually an instance where you can get hurt in there the air. There are ways to get hurt in the air. Yeah, so, you can most definitely get hurt in the air on that one. The yeah. old juggler. But we tried Woo. it probably like 20 times, mm -hmm. but we got it in the end, which is which was sick. But imagine, imagine if your head got cl sh clean sheared off. Yeah. <laughs> full decapitation. Just full decap. <laughs> that, or you lost a hand or something. There's a lot of things can go. Decapitation. The decapitation, would, although it's, it would have been devastating, would have been an incredible clip. Just what do you do? What do you do with that clip, though? Like yeah. <laughs> that can never see the light of day. I True. mean, I could see Canute like, ah, uh, you know, it does. It it's got some entertainment value. I know. It's, it's, <laughs> can it's, we use it? <laughs> can, we, can we use it? I don't know. I don't, His I head don't know. Didn't fly off, but <laughs> I don't think my mom would appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. That. True. <laughs> All right, I think it's time for you know what, buds. A next Ooh. segment of the show. We're spinning it. It's time for welcome. To the liquid death. Death, death, death. Spinning wheel of 
<laughs> We're currently uh, crushing some liquid deaths here on the set. Uh, you know what's great about liquid deaths, buds, is you're not contributing to the plastic. No, that's the best part, right? Death to plastic? Death to plastic. And also, I, like I said earlier, not a, not a huge fan of murdering people. Nope. But I, you know what I am a fan of, buds? Murdering your thirst. Exactly. That's what these things do. Uh, you can pick them up at Whole Foods or Bud's favorite establishment. 7-Eleven. I see kids come in. Every time I go to 7 some kids buying liquid death. So it's uh, hot. You don't stay cool out there, right? Yeah, you don't get a DUI with this thing. It's a great beverage. And uh, also, if you want to support the podcast, head on over to liquiddeath.com slash bombhole. You'll get a free couple of koozies. Again, liquiddeath.com slash bombhole. Now, let's spin this wheel. You're going to buy these things anyway, so you might as well get the koozies. You know what I mean? Yep, definitely. Uh, we didn't have our white marker, so it's hard to read, but um, sp- you're going to just give this thing a big spin, and then we'll see what happens. And then we'll tell you what the answer is. All right. I just go full, like, yeah, full send? Yeah, go full send on it. We'll tell you your fate. So. It says, wear a oh. blonde wig oh, yeah. for 10 minutes. <laughs> You're going to have to wear a blonde wig. <laughs> that was sick. For a good part of this episode. <laughs> it's a mullet wig. I've always wanted to know what it feels like to be a blonde. Here it is. Slide that thing on. Thank you. Can I put the hat on on top or yeah, not? Yeah, put the hat on. Whatever, whatever it. makes you comfortable. Right on. So, uh, yeah, uh, for the listeners... Uh, Torgir is sliding his dome into a blonde wig. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, he looks Dude, great. You look good. Dude, you look I'm kind of feeling this. Yeah, I'm not going to put the hat on. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to leave it right here. You look like you could be starting a heavy metal band. Yeah. There you go. Dude, this is a Motley Crue shit yeah, right here. You could be, it's a good look. It's almost like he made the intro to the Liquid Death uh, theme <laughs> yeah, song dude. with that. <laughs> wow. I like that. Damn. Dude, you should for Halloween maybe be yeah. a uh, heavy metal dude. It's got a little mullet cut. Yeah, I like the mullet. And the bangs are all sticking up. <laughs> it's a really good look. Yeah, it looks like a mullet and headwind kind yeah. of. It's like blowing oh, back a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I think, you know, if you need to reinvent yourself, like, you're like, ah, oh, shit, my career's getting a little stale. Just either grow your hair out or get a blonde wig. Yeah. It's a whole new <laughs> Grow your hair out, career. tie it blonde, boom. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Or you can borrow that until your hair grows out. Yeah. We'll lend that to you. Yeah, I might have to. Just wear it permanently. Snag this one. Now, I heard you were one of the only people to uh, get on Monster, get dropped by Monster, and then get re-signed by Monster. Yeah. Ooh. How sick is that? That's, that's, that's going to be playing with your feelings there. <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah. A, a girlfriend or something. Yeah. You know? uh, we broke up, but uh, now I want you back. Yeah. One of those scenarios. Yeah, kind of crazy. I don't know what happened there. They saw the switch back five, or they saw the new trick. <laughs> they saw like, the switch back five. They're like, "We want the guy back. <laughs> we want him back." Is that what happened? No. So uh, I uh, I signed with the uh, Monster Europe in like 2011, I think maybe or 12. Um, this dude Simon Maldsley, super sick dude, um, and yeah, just signed a two year deal with them, and then in those two years, uh, I got injured the second year, so I didn't really do anything. And then they got a new guy on. Simon quit. And then this other guy came on. Uh, and uh, he was just like kind of looking at the spreadsheet, I guess. He's just like, hey, this guy's not doing anything. He's like, why, why are we paying paper. him? You yeah. know, like we're, we're not going to like give a dude a bunch of money not to do anything. So, so they didn't give me a new deal. And then, uh, but I got to know Cody Dresser. Uh, Back when I when I did ride for Monster back then, big air horn and uh, Austin Hodges, who's now uh, the TM over there, which is like super dope. And I hung out with him a bunch. And then like one day he was just like, "Dude, we need to get you back on." I can't, <laughs> take, I can't take you seriously in the wings. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> He's all I'm taking him seriously. <laughs> He's like all. <laughs> I forgot he even had a wig on. Yeah, it looks so good. It does. So who got natural. you back on, Dresser or Hodges? Uh, or? It's kind of like a team effort, probably. Mm. But um, was but it right after the the method? No, no, no. This was like two years ago. Ah. Um. And uh, yeah, we were at Dew Tour in Breckenridge, and uh, and we've been talking about this for like a year. It's like we need to get you back on, like figuring out how we're gonna do it. Uh, and then Cody actually just like we sat down. He's like, dude, here's my offer. Boom. You want it? And I'm like. I'm down, dude. That's dope. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, like, no agent, no nothing. It was just like, all right, let's go. That's the way to do it, huh? Yeah. 
Now, we don't talk about current bisque on the show because, uh, you know, it's a little off topic. It's bad taste. Yeah. Bad taste. But uh, let's talk uh, contest winning Post bisque. bisque. Let's talk Aaron Style. Let's talk uh, big money. What are, we, what are we talking for biggest earnings at a contest? I probably like 20 grand. Woo! I was like, uh, baby. But I got one, which was, we went to Andorra, and I won like 15,000 euros. Does that mean it's tax-free? Yeah. Andorra is a tax-free yeah. community. So they, like, they, I won 15,000 euros, which is like 18,000 bucks or something. No tax. Just straight into my account. Dude. Woo. Like, what do you do? <laughs> Do you buy any, just like, you, buy dude, anything? I, I never thought about that. Like a contest at Endora, that's the one to win. Yeah, but I mean, contest. you will get fucked on it if you bring it into another country. You got to like Norway for me, it. you know? You like, got to open you, up like, an account yeah. in Andorra yeah. or in uh, where's everyone? Cayman Islands, Monaco, Monaco. 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 Monaco, yeah. Yeah, that's what you do, or Switzerland, maybe even. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I did have to like ultimately pay taxes on it in Norway, but like it's still like you should have opened up that Swiss bank account. Should have. Did you buy any dumb shit? I bought a car. Okay, like a nice one or just oh, a shitty old golf? Oh, it was dope. Respect. Yeah, yeah, that's respectable. Uh, you should have just blew it all in Andorra. Yeah, probably should have for sure. Bought, bought the some, bar. Yeah, bought the bar. Blew it all at the yeah. after Talk party. That'd respect. be sick, actually. Mm -hmm. Well, we did go to Barcelona. I spent a good 10% for sure. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, with you and all your uh, Norwegian boys, I got another guest question from a great Norwegian. Uh, big fan of Stolly Sandbach. Here we go. What's up, boys? Eastone, Grandis, big fan, big fan of the show. Excited that you guys have my boy Torger on there. Really looking forward to that episode. Uh, I got a little question. Torger, buddy, you're a tough guy. Do you ever cry? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, what is your biggest fear, if you have one at all? That's a great question. Wow, that is a great question. Yeah, I like both questions. Yeah. <laughs> he throws it out there. Yeah, dude. I was kind of expecting something uh, different, but yeah, that's good. I like that. Um, because I have a lot of fears, for sure. Getting buried alive is a big one. Mm. Getting eaten alive. Shark attack. I have <laughs> like, that fear. <laughs> I got, that's like primal fears. Everyone has them, I guess. But I, I don't know. Just if... Like, the, the thing that's like most that I think about the most probably is like if I like don't work hard enough to not make my like snowboarding career work, it'll like, I'm going to be like a washed up, like shitty old snowboarder who like everyone was just like, I hey, can this guy quit already kind of deal. But, um, I wouldn't say that's a big fear, but that's like definitely something that's in the back of my head for sure. Well, if you're not, what's yours, bud? My greatest fear. Yeah. I don't, that's a tough one, dude. Um, I know you got a water thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm scared of, I mean, I guess being in the, when I'm in the water, near water, being eaten by a shark. But that's only when I'm around water. But I, Luckily, we're it, landlocked over yeah, here. Yeah, luckily, that's why I live in Utah. But I could be in a lake, and I'll still feel like mm -hmm. I'm going to get my toes bitten off. But uh, when I'm that last dude to come in, and the, the waves, like you haven't caught your wave, and the sun's going down, I literally start to panic, and I'll, I'll even just ride in on my stomach if mm -hmm. I have to, because I'm so scared when yeah. I look around and no one else is there. Fully. This morning, I woke up, and my wife showed me a video of some chicks, like, laying in the ocean with a, like, 10-foot hammerhead under them, just because she knows it freaks me out. <laughs> but it was in her feed. It was in her TikTok this morning. And oh, my God. The chicks are just laying there floating, and there's literally a 10-foot hammerhead just circling. Oh, God. Jesus Didn't eat Christ, them. Dude. But, but I don't know about my greatest fear. I know that my, my straight-up greatest fear is outliving my significant other in old age. That's heavy. I think if you're old and your partner dies... That seems like the gnarliest thing. To yeah. Do with. Oh, yeah. I My wife it. and I have a pact. Uh, we're going to go out within a week of each other. Yeah. Blood pact. I feel like a, a lot of people actually do, though. Yeah, like they when, do. Like when they're that old and then their partner dies, they yeah, just, they, like, they lose, lose everything. And mm -hmm. just, like, they fade away, like, in a matter of days or weeks dude, or dude, months. Your bud's, your bud's gone, dude. That's yeah. When, yeah. You, when you're, like, true soulmates like that, yeah, it's just, it happens. Yeah. And I heard uh, you taught, You said you had a fear of being buried alive. Now, I heard that you had a gnarly one this year as far as an avalanche goes. Yeah. Um, we were uh, in Switzerland shooting a photo project with uh, uh, Vernon Deck. Big air horn. Big air horn. Um, yeah, and we, we were in the zone that we've been shooting for two weeks. 
Like every single day for two weeks, we'd been in that zone and nothing had moved at all. We've been like super careful, um, like taking all the precautions that you like you have to when you're out in the backcountry. Um, but on that last day, it was the last day before I was going to come over here. So I flew here the next day. But so we went up and then the wind has shifted. So it had wind loaded this like south facing face that was like all ice underneath. But me being a fucking shithead didn't think about that, you know? Like it, it was just like a mellow like slope and then a rock and then it, like another slope and then it went up on the other side. And and we were shooting this wind lip on the other side and then and then we were kind of just like, yeah, let's just do a turn here before like on the way there. And then I drop into this thing try to get some speed and then like before that rock i just do like a backside turn and i just feel like everything just like whoa, and it just ripped and then i look up because i'm like i hope this thing is just below me but i look up the whole entire face it's probably like 300 feet wide and then like at least like three feet deep and then i'm just like fuck I need to outrun this thing. Like, I'm going to be buried if I don't. And then I scream, like, slide. And then I hear Vernon screaming behind me, so I know he knows where I am. And then I just, like, stay up, stay standing. So, like, started swimming, riding down, like, tried to tried to not fuck up. Uh, and then I come to a stop in the bottom gully. And it starts going up on the other side. I had, like, snow up to my, like, my waist, basically. And then I stop. Snow keeps coming. Oof. I'm just like, fuck me, dude. This is going to suck. I'm not dying because I know that he knows where I am and he's going to find me, but I might be out for a couple of minutes. You know, like I'm going to be buried right now. So I just kind of like cover my like mouth to try and create a little bit of a, like a pocket of air. Snow keeps coming, keeps coming, keeps coming. And then when it stops, like right at my shoulders and I'm like, dude, what the hell? And then Vernon can't come down because, like, the other side of the face is, like, didn't slide. But it might if he goes down, you know. And it was all, like, rocks everywhere. So he couldn't ride down, like, the Abbey path. So I had to, like, get my backpack off and dig myself out. And my board was, like, it was concrete down there. So I was, like, I had to dig my board out. And then the clouds roll in. We can't see shit. And then we have to get out. And it took us, like, three hours to get out. And it was, like, it was kind of heavy. And I got on a fucking plane the next morning, flew, flew to Jackson Hole. Jesus, dude. That could have went real bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was heavy. Another thing for the listeners that are unfamiliar with slides, like, explain how quickly the snow sets up. Yeah, I mean, like, it's like, as soon as that, like, air gets pushed out of the snow, when it moves, it turns to concrete. You can't move. You're like, it's like, no matter how strong you think you are, you, ha you have nothing. It's like, Mother Nature is going to fuck you up. Mm -hmm. it's so gnarly so like my board got like caught under it right away and i like tried to like get my nose out no chance mm -hmm. and it was just like the snow just kept building kept building kept building but i like i like managed to keep my cool which was like a really good feeling like a safe feeling because like you you always like it's in the back of your mind like what am i gonna do if i'm ever in an avalanche and like, mm. am I going to freak out? Am I going to panic? Like, what am I going to do? So I'm like super like stoked that I managed to keep my cool and, and get out of it like that. But dude, that was, it was kind of a gnarly experience for sure. If you were two feet lower, you would have been buried. Oh yeah, dude. If I, if I would have like, f like fell over or sat down on my ass or something, I would have been under. Yeah. So like the, Ooh. like standing was it just up. You and was, Vernon? Nobody else? Just us, dude. Damn. Yeah, dude, it wasn't the smartest move. That's another for thing. Sure, another, but. another. What are what are the takeaways of things you could have done better in hindsight? Well, definitely don't get a false sense of security of where like places you've been riding a bunch, like just thinking like everything's the same from day to day. Like that's the biggest takeaway for me. Like always check the snowpack, check conditions, check like wind direction to know exactly what the snowpack is doing, and uh, and have a good crew. I'm lucky to have an experienced mountain guy like Vernon with me. Like, if there's one guy who's out there like, that I want to have with me in Europe, then, like, he's definitely, like, up there. So, like, I knew that he was going to be able to find me for sure. But, it's like, 
you want a crew, dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to be more people. Vernon's definitely worth a couple people, though, huh? Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> he's, he's a, a big dude. dude, dude yeah, he would get me he's, out of there for sure. He's a big dude. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. I think even with travel, anything in life is getting too comfortable is like the biggest, mm -hmm. yeah. biggest Fam mistake you can make. Familiarity doesn't equal safety. Yeah. No. And then another thing, too, is like, you know, like when we go out, of, it's a little bit of a tiptoey day. We try to make sure we have the right amount of crew, like usually four or five people is yep. pretty ideal for being able to move around the mountains and, and know that the people with you know what they're doing. And then uh, another thing, too, what you're talking about is basically a train trap. So when it slides into a gully, think about... You know, when you're up up on the hill, think about which way the snow's going to move, and and so if there's a there's a it goes you know flattens out or there's a high point where somewhere you can get, but you know if it goes into a gully, that's where a lot of people die in train traps because yep. it just goes it stacks up so high and so fast, and you can't get out of that. So another thing we always recommend is like, you know, take an avalanche class, learn this stuff, just take the time to enjoy the mountains because it can definitely be deadly out there. Oh yeah, Gary <sighs> shit. Uh, do you want to keep wearing the wig? I feel like you've done your 10 oh, minutes. We got, we got 10 minutes? <laughs> yeah. You definitely did 10 minutes. Yeah, right, yeah. sweet. Yeah, I'll get it. I was getting kind of itchy, actually. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I think Bud's had a little bit of head lice when he <laughs> last night put that on. So. <laughs> now, let, now, let's talk about another aspect of uh, North American backcountry uh, riding, and that's uh, snowmobiling. So how's your how's your snowmobile skill set? Mm. Yeah, I know where we're going with this, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a setup question? <laughs> this, well, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna ease this one in. Yeah. I mean, it's a good question though. It is definitely. You guys don't sled much. Where no, you're from, no. I imagine. Uh, literally, the first time I went out in the backcountry sledding by myself or like on my own sled was this year. Oh wow! Yeah. So it's safe to say that you're probably horrible at snowmobiling. Not a very avid snowmobiler. No. <laughs> yeah. It comes with time, right? Yeah. You learn by your mistakes. So, yeah, you how, do. How, Otherwise, how you just thrown on and doubled, right? What's up? In the past, you just were doubled, like yeah. Like I haven't up. really like been on that much like snowmobile terrain at all. I've oh. uh, been to Jackson Hole like once with Volcom. I just doubled with with like Gooch, which yeah. was insane. And he just told you what to do. Yeah. Lean, lean, lean with me. So Let's easy. Go. Yeah. But um. But yeah, this year was definitely a steep learning curve. Where'd you get a sled? <laughs> do you have a sled now? Uh, no, uh, Monster actually had oh, a get the deal with, uh, places. Polaris. So they I got heard, three brand new 850s. Yeah, I heard you treated that one really good, the one that you Yeah, had. oh, dude, I was killing it. Smooth, it. Didn't, nothing went nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. Nothing dude. went wrong with that. Nothing I'll, wrong I'll tell you with what, that if sled. Polaris is listening, we wouldn't mind a deal. You know? uh, I'm more of a do guy myself, <laughs> but I'll, I'll, take, a, I'll take a Polaris. I'm down yeah. one. I call it Polaris. Yeah, I, I call it Polaris personally, <laughs> but yeah, they both work. You know, what's the deal with that? What's the deal like the ski do versus Polaris kind of? It's just what you own. Yeah, basically, whatever snowmobile you have, you talk shit on the other ones. Got That's how it works. Got it. So if you switch, if you switch over, you talk shit on the one you just had. It's, uh, it's just a point of pride. Um, men were were prideful idiots, so yep. it's just kind of right along the lines with that. I know. Now, um, now this clip I'm going to show. Uh, I'd like to preface it with the fact that you should always be wearing a snowmobile uh, helmet when you're on the <laughs> on the sled. So let's just get that out of the way. So you, you made a mistake there, a huge mistake. So that's why I kind of thought that I was going to be in the safe zone on this. <laughs> like, is they're not going to be showing it because I'm not wearing a helmet? But I like it. <laughs> We <laughs> we don't have any uh, connections with helmet companies. Or That's me right there. <laughs> so what we have here is a guy that uh, – give us the walkthrough before this happened. All right. So we uh, – we You, were you out can tell he really loves this <laughs> yeah, clip. He He's really enjoying like this. this. <laughs> <laughs> we were out in Utah filming. Uh, we shot a jump called uh, Mineshaft, which mm. is a legendary jump. A respectable mm -hmm. jump. Yep, definitely. A lot of, uh, lot of good uh, shots and a lot of good video parts on that jump. Mm. Uh, we had a really good session there. Um, got some good tricks. We were pretty amped up. Uh, got back to the to the truck, uh, and uh, Stalin was hassling me. Like, dude, you got to load the sled, dude. You got to load the sled. And I was like, fuck. Why would I have to like fucking load the sled? Why can't anyone like <laughs> I can actually snowmobile load the sled? Yo, you got to do it. You got to do it. You got to figure out how to do it. He's like, all right, fuck it. I'm gonna fucking load the sled. <laughs> and then <laughs> respect. He likes to get in the mix. He likes to get in the mix. <laughs> yeah. All right, and then so. And then we were ri driving a uh, Monsters F350, kind of brand new $80,000 truck with a sled deck on top. And this is like a, this is a high truck with a sled deck on top of the bed. And the ramp to go up it is like super steep. So you have to carry some speed going into that thing. And um, yeah. So here's the clip. I hit it. Here we go. Let's get a little audio so that people can hear this. 
Yeah. And let's go. <laughs> oh, 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 no. <laughs> Are you okay, dude? <laughs> yeah, I'm good, man. <laughs> Unscathed. I'll tell you what, I've been uh, sledding for over 10 years, and when a situation unloading a truck on that, I still would ask Chris or someone to do it for yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. I think I've been, so I've been sledding for a clean two weeks. <laughs> yes, you should have just let someone with experience. Oh, yeah. You know, you got to respect somebody that wants to get in the mix. Yeah, true. It's like, you know, whether it's cliff diving, whether it's <laughs> yeah, true. hitting the big cheese wedge. You don't want to be the sled. guy sitting on the side. You don't want to be on the side. You got to <laughs> yeah. get in the mix. Yeah. So. yeah. What um, was the damage report? All right, so like, so what happened is, <laughs> <laughs> so Mind for, you. for the listeners, just to, for, for the people that didn't see that, what happened is he he loads the sled, gets to the top, Air Bud Golden Retrievers it kind of on top of the sled deck, lands too far to the side, it kickflips off the side, he jumps off like an eight foot tall sled deck, and uh, seemed to be okay, right? Yeah, that was pretty much exactly what happened. I was like, I came in, I think I had like pretty good speed, but then when I was halfway up, I felt like I was slowing down. So like, and then I full whiskey throttled it, airborne this fucking twenty twenty one brand new Polaris eight hundred and fifty, and then now I'm like, I'm flying over an eighty thousand dollar F three hundred and fifty, land on top of the like the cab. I hear something break, just shatter. It was a back window, and then <laughs> <laughs> I land, and then. <laughs> There's this like there's this like guard thing on the sled deck to prevent <laughs> you from doing that. Called the headache crack. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so that's yep. to prevent it. So I land one ski on that, one ski off that, full kick flip. <laughs> I go off, side flip off the side of it, and then land. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I just broke the truck <laughs> and dude, the sled. More importantly, good thing you didn't land under yeah, that yeah, sled, yeah. dude. No, that's so heavy. He's nimble. He's nimble. How yeah, much? Is, how much does sled weigh? Uh, I think there are five hundred without gas, and probably with all the shit on, a little five fifty, something like that. Yeah, good yeah. thing you had that air awareness of a true <laughs> champion. Yeah, dude. And then it's like, grab the sled. It's fine. Really beautiful. The sled shout was shout fine. out to Polaris. Yeah, that was Quality insane. Sled. I was like, I broke the sled. I broke the window. I broke like the truck. Everything. Well, and uh, yeah, sled was fine, completely fine. That's it was incredible. like a, a little like ding in the plastic, which is nothing. Which is nothing. That's gonna happen on a normal day sledding. Yeah, anyways, exactly. Really. And then like the the back window, and there was a little, little dent on the side of the truck. Well, I can but, take you. I can take you through what you did wrong. There's a classic <laughs> mistake. So you want to come in with some speed, but as soon as your track hits the uh, basically the ramp, yeah, it links up. So yeah. you carry enough speed for your track to hit the ramp, and then you can back way off. Yeah, the exactly. But I I love the respect the send. That's what he get. That's what he does. He, he, and when you say link up, you can just put a little gas. Yeah, it gets traction once it hits the ramp. It's yep. not going to slip. So I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah, <laughs> nobody <laughs> you talked. Thought to you this. had to keep going until you made it all the way up there. Yeah, dude, those poor monster sleds. I was talking to Sage and uh, when he was filming for up? his real snow, and he's like, uh, basically, he was mounting a board rack to the back of one of these brand new machines. And he essentially thought it was like a skidoo where you just kind of drill into the tunnel. And where he drilled in basically was where all the radiator coolant stuff is. <laughs> so he's got this brand new sled. He starts drilling holes in it. And there's like radiator fluid <laughs> shit fucking squirting <laughs> coolant. What do you do to squirting fix that? Out. He fucked the sled. He had to bring him to the shop. <laughs> then you got fucking tour gear over here kick flipping it. Thank God those guys got that sugar water money though. Yeah, and right. So, you know, I honestly don't think they paid for it either. Like, <laughs> That like That's Polaris, incredible. Like, sounds like a Polaris problem. I mean, did anyone get, <laughs> <laughs> did anyone even get bummed at you? No, I called yeah. Austin and uh, like, whatever. He had a couple the night before, so he was kind of hung over and was like, "Hey, dude, uh, kind of." I kick flipped the sled off the yeah, truck. I kind of <laughs> broke the like the back window and uh, kick flipped the the truck the sled. He's like, "How fast were you fucking going? You like you can't do that." Like, you know, like that's like literally impossible. I was like, "Nope, well, I did it." <laughs> And then, uh, but he was like super cool about it. So just another I, day yeah. for those guys, I imagine. Yeah, I mean, I was ready to to cough up some dough to really like, fix it. I don't it, think but, they would have done but, that. But um, but they were super cool about it. So like, yeah, I was, yeah, major props to Austin for handling that one. Thank you. Oh, well, we're glad you're all right. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> So let's got start. a dope clip though. Yeah, yeah. I'm got a dope clip. that's a heater clip. A I know heater. it. That thing's. I, I'm glad that it surfaced for this episode. I know it was under wraps for a while. It was. Uh, you know, it's it's also a great uh, tutorial for uh, what not to do. People exactly. Can learn from that. Exactly. Yep. So, um, <laughs> let's talk about your Olympic experience, dude. Because the first one, 
I believe you're coming from a backcountry trip, or is that the second one? No, first one. I wasn't supposed to go on the first one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I was. <laughs> that which one was that? P- Fourteen. That's Sochi. 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 Got it. Yeah. Yep. Um, so what happened was we were at X Games, and then they announced the team. I wasn't on it, and so I went to Europe uh, to go on a backcountry trip with uh, Marcus Keller and a couple other European Volcom dudes, and. Uh, so we, I get to Zurich, and then we drive like eight hours up to this place called Bosco Gurin, which is like a sick ass zone, a lot of snow. Um, and then when we're like half an hour away, like Thomas Harstad, who was like the boss of the team back then, calls me and he's like, "Where are you?" I'm, like, I'm in Switzerland. He's like, "How far are you from an airport?" At eight and a half minus a half. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like seven and a half hours away from the airport. Like, get there now. And I'm like. I can't do that. Dude, I'm filming right now. Like, I'm like, and then he's like, dude, Torstein broke his collarbone. You need to get here right now. So I get in a buddy's car, drive it to Zurich, go into the parking garage where they have like this whole like Team Switzerland Olympic check in thing. Everyone's wearing their uniforms and everything. And I'm just like, c- civilian. <laughs> <laughs> Full like, Government issue, bags, fucking all like Volcom clothes. I'm like, I don't look like an Olympian at all. No paperwork, no nothing. I have a passport and an email. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get on this flight. And then this dude's like looking at me all weird and like, what What are you talking about? You're not going. And then I showed him the email. It's like, I got a ticket to fly on the Olympic, like the Swiss Olympic team f- chartered flight. Uh, so yeah, I get there. This dude comes out waiting for me like uh, at the like customs and he gives me all my paperwork get me through this like private driver comes pick me up take me up to the, the olympic village and then i have like two hours of practice and then straight into contest Holy, so you, the olympics was like already going on basically oh yeah they had three days of practice oh wow i had two hours so tor got hurt in practice yeah so, so torstein he was trying to switch back 270 on like one of the big rails and then he, he like, went over the bars and, and uh, broke his collarbone. And at that point, he was pretty much favored to be a top dog. Yes, yeah. most so, definitely. So on that flight over, are you just shitting yourself? Like, what's going through your head on the way? I don't, I, I don't even remember. I don't even think I was nervous because mm-hmm. I wasn't – I was, like, fully contest mode up until X Games, and then they tell you that what you've been working for, you're not on the team. You're like, uh, like fuck it. I'm going to go film. And then when you're like get drawn back into that bubble, kind of takes a while to adjust, you know? So I don't even like, I was just kind of probably thinking like, dude, I wonder if these dudes have like, they're probably looking at me like the biggest fucking idiot right now. Cause I'm like full civilian <laughs> on that flight, you know? Like, and uh, yeah, I didn't even have time to get nervous, which could be a good thing, but I ended up screwing up. So yeah. So what I, w- I wonder too, because you guys got the Norway team and you guys have coaches and it's we talk talk about it on the show often, but at the top of these slope style runs, there's like always coaches from different countries speaking in different languages. And um, were you were you like, you know, what was going on at the top before you drop in for the Olympics? That's what I want to <laughs> know. Like, what's what's the vibe in the booth, dude? Olympics is crazy because it's the the one contest where like everything's on the line. Like, it happens every four years. It's, like, the biggest sporting event in the world. And everyone's silent up there. They don't talk. Like, people are fucking shitting their pants up there. Like, no <laughs> one's, like, really, like, no one's talking. It just like, smells it, like poop up yeah, there. It's fully like, quiet. <laughs> <laughs> What's that smell? Uh, I don't know. Four people have shit themselves in the booth so far. Fear-based. Yeah. No, it's crazy. Like, all the other contests, everyone's, like, laughing, talking, having a good time. But up there, for, like, an Olympic finals... It's silent. Oof. Crickets. Up yeah, there. it's so weird. It's like the craziest experience. But, I mean, it's cool to have been there, but it's definitely not the vibe that I'm looking for when I'm up doing a contest. You know, like True. I want to talk about everything not snowboarding when I'm up at the top. And then when I drop in, you're like, all right, you got to do what you got to do. Because if I like overthink everything, then I like mess it up. Mm-hmm. It's like, let's make everybody very, very uncomfortable. Yeah, make it worse. Right, right before they do the biggest run of their life. <laughs> <Yeah>. Yep. <laughs> I feel like the move, I don't think you can get all the passes, but the move would be like, let's bring all the boys out, yeah. hang out in the rider's tent, let's be idiots, and let's keep it light, and then I'll go chuck ass and get myself a goddamn medal. Well, I mean, that's that would have been a winning recipe for yeah. sure. 
Like, if you can do that, but you can't get anyone in there. I know? guess you and you and uh, Stall A and all your boys are up there. Probably sound like you're talking in reverse record. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> speaking code, yeah. <laughs> you guys are speaking in uh, speaking Morse code. code. Yeah, yeah. A little Morse code, yeah. No, it's it's good. It's nice that we have like a lot of people, like a lot of homies. Who was the team that year? Fourteen. It was Yerman, Broughton, Stale, uh, Torstein. Well, he was out, so it was me, and then uh, uh, Emil Ulsletten. Okay, it's like yeah, he uh, like so Yerman doesn't snowboard anymore, and Emil doesn't snowboard anymore, but. What do you mean so that was before they the they totally quit snowboarding. Well, I mean, like uh, competitively, competitively, and like gotcha. they don't like they're not making a living out of it. That anymore. was kind of phase. There was like Andreas, or there, there's a bunch of phases. But now it's like the the current Norwegian team is like basically like it's like everybody's like on roids. It's like uh, Mark McGuire in the MLB. Yeah, just on. It's like you guys are all just fucking stacked. What's yeah, going? it's kind of like now. It's like it's been like a little generational change now. Mm-hmm. Um, I just quit the team actually, mm-hmm. uh, after this season. Now it's like Marcus, Marcus Cleveland, Mons, Roisland, Stahl is still in there. Uh, Marcus Olimstad, Fridge, uh, and a couple other dudes, uh, who are all really super good. So, um, I think it's looking good for sure, but a lot of other countries are looking pretty freaking good too. Oh yeah. Some yeah. competition out so there. What, what I want to go back to is with the coaching thing. What's your take on coaching and what were those, like, what was your Norwegian coach saying before you drop in for the Olympics? And, and remind me how you, well, you did too, because I forget. Oh, uh, Sochi, I did, I didn't even make it past qualifiers, I think. Okay. I got like, like 20 something probably. Um, but yeah, uh, coaching is like, I've never been coached. I've always been like coached by my homies. It's always been like you learn something, I learn it from you, you learn it from me kind of deal. Like you kind of help each other. So our like Norwegian coaches, they've always been just like riding around, filming, just shredding, trying to keep the vibe up, you know, trying to like keep morale high, you know, like just everyone has a good time. And when you're having a good time, you're riding good. And that's like, that's been like the mantra of the team kind of like, as long as you're having fun, you're doing it right. And then that's what they said. Like, that's what he said when I'm, I'm at the top. Just enjoy it. Have fun. You know, it's not like, just fucking, uh, let's go, let's get this fucking gold and like all that shit. It's not like that at all. Which is like, I don't know, to each of their own. But for me, that works for sure. Okay, then let's fast forward to the Pyeongchang Olympics. Let's talk about that experience. Yeah, that was definitely more of like a, a build up to it. I was expected to get on the team and like make it and and um it was like I wanted to do good there. Um so yeah, I mean we went to so I went <laughs> I uh went to uh, I broke my uh scaphoid in uh, November in Oslo. So I had a cast on and then at Dutor I dislocated my elbow. So and then Right the day before the Olympic Big Air final, I land on my fucking head and I separate my AC joint. Oh, God. So I was like, <laughs> all right, I've been doing like all this work. And then now I'm like, I'm like RoboCop over here, you know, like it's just like tape everywhere. And it's like, I'm like, I'm not myself. I'm just like, I need enhancements to like even be able to get out of bed. You know what I mean? It's fucked up. <laughs> so like, yeah, I got into that final and I was just like, it's like not all of, yeah, <laughs> like kind of. All right, let's just like fuck it, and see what happens. Did and you then, actually have a cast on and everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. cast on. <laughs> Robocop. Robocop. Yeah. <laughs> I had a cast on here, and then I had like this, uh, like this was fully taped, so that I couldn't like extend it more than like here, forty-five degrees. Wow. And then, um, and then I had this other like splint something on there too and then my ac joint was like taped down because like when you separate your ac joint it pops up yeah but so my physio just like taped it down that's like such a nagging pain too it's like this deep yeah yeah and when you try to like initiate a spin or anything like that it's just like you feel it like clicking in there and stuff it's so weird you basically Mm -hmm. had no chance huh yeah well i mean I wouldn't say that, but yeah. like, <laughs> but I just mean like you're not yourself. You you're not advantage. No, you, definitely you've trained not. All this time, and here you are, like RoboCop. Yeah, bomber. So how'd you do? 
Um, I got, uh, what I got, sixth, I think. That's pretty good for RoboCop. Sixth or seventh. Might have been seventh. Uh, but, um, but yeah, um, it was, like, super flat light. It was really hard to ride that day because the day before it was, like, warm and slushy and sunny and nice. And then it got cold and, and like, overcast on the finals days. So it was icy and flat light. We need to talk about Big Air, the, the fact that you pulled. We're going to go back to the old switch. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> We're going to beat that dead horse. But I, I'm going to take you to my experience watching the Olympics because you're watching it. Everybody's chucking ass out there. And you're like, and I just remember the fact that you're at the goddamn Olympics and he does the switchback five method on the biggest stage. You know, uh, I remember just being like yelling at my TV, just like, <laughs> fuck yes like literally <laughs> yelling at it like fuck yes so it's like you may not have won the gold but you kind of were the people's champ you won our hearts yeah. i appreciate that thank you yeah it was like i landed my first run i did a uh, like because everyone were doing 1440s and it was like a big thing like we were talking in the writer's tent like dude just go 14 you'll be fine you'll be in and i'm like dude like people people are gonna like people are gonna chuck in this like second heat because i was in the second heat and then like I'm I'm going back 16. Like I'm going to I want to be safe. Like so I did. I went I went back 16. Went pretty big. Landed it good, and got it like a like a like 94 or something like crazy high score out of 100. Yeah. And then I was like, all right, I'm good. Like I'm good. And then like my brother texts me like, dude, you gotta fucking do it. And then Spenny texts me like, dude. <laughs> If you don't do a switchback five right now, I'm gonna beat your ass when you get back here. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then I was kind of like, yeah, well, I mean, like, I kind of have to do it. So, as I was, I was already in. I felt like super comfortable. And then, even though I, I wasn't, I couldn't have done anything better. You know, like I couldn't have upped that score at all. True. So like, all right, might as well chuck one for the boys. You know, like, and then uh, ended up, like, yeah, that ended up being like. What everyone noticed, I guess. How was it judged? Sickest thing, dude. So uh, they gave me like a 65 or something. Like, that's a pretty decent score. Mm -hmm. There was one dude. I'm not going to say his name now, but there was one dude who did a backside 1080 in that, and I beat him. <laughs> As it should be. That's good judging. Yeah, that's actually good judging. Um, I, one thing I want to highlight, though, that it seems to be a, theory, a theme in your life that I think a lot of people can can uh, take away. Chuck one for the boys. Chuck yeah. one for the boys. I really like Chuck one for the boys is like, you know, you always love having that guy in the crew that's like Chuck one for the boys. Yeah. Like he's going to he's gonna get up there. He's going to Chuck one for the boys. Well, you yeah. kind of have to Chuck one for the boys. Mm hmm yeah, if with no boys, there wouldn't be any you, you know? Yeah, like, true. Yeah. Yeah. And especially on such a platform that you were on and everyone in the world watching you and yeah. people texting you from across the planet. Yeah, I kind of fucked myself on that one. Because I was like, <laughs> all right, you're the Switchback 5 guy now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> all right. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. We could keep talking about it for maybe we got maybe three more hours of Switchback yeah, 5 talk. keep talking Switchback 5 talk. Yeah. But, um, or we could pay the bills. Let's pay the bills. <laughs> uh, I think it's time for a pub beer situation, huh, buds? Hashtag. Cheap fun beer. If you're looking to get absolutely shit faced this summer, <laughs> which people are looking to do, let's be honest. I, I mean, would recommend summer. chugging some uh, pub beer. I heard that Tor Gear recently maybe picked up a case or two. Yeah, Mount Hood, huh? I did. Hood River. It was a gas station. What was your inspiration? Oh, it's just cheap fun beer, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready to have a, a good time and not spend a lot of was money. Was it enjoyable? Oh, it was super good. This stuff just it's so drink have, highly drinkable. Yeah, exactly. definitely smashable for we sure. We have a uh, yeah, we have a happy customer over here. So now from Pub Beer, we have a new kind of uh, game show. I don't know what you want to call it. It's called the Pub Beer Crapshoot. So uh, you roll uh, dice. You roll two dice, and what you get. Um, there's a list of two through twelve. Snake Eyes, tell us about the time you went number two in your pants. You shit your pants. Three is what would your house party entrance theme song be? Four, That's a good question. If you roll a four, what is one of your worst bails? Five, would you rather have a tattoo designed by Grenier and tattooed by Eastone or vice versa? <laughs> what? Six, what is your name on your fake ID? Seven, who is your favorite people to, who is your favorite person to party with? Excuse me. Eight, tell us about a breakout moment that helped launch your career. Nine, name one thing on your career bucket list. Ten, What's the biggest prize check you've ever won? If you've never won a check, hand th hand them a $100 pub beer check. 
Uh, looks like you're not going to get that hundred dollar check. You already kind of fucked yourself in that. And <laughs> they if, haven't sent that to us yet. If you had to be Siamese twins with one person industry, which person would you be stuck with? And twelve shotgun a beer or liquid death, depending on your choice. Now take these two dice here, shake them up, and throw them on the table. Let's see what you get. All right. What's the goon gear? Is that it's a, a one? six. Oh, the goon gear is a six. I got an eight. So that's an eight. Eight would be, it's a classic one. Tell us about a breakout moment that helped launch your career. <laughs> We've all that what we ask every episode. <laughs> These dice are rigged. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean that, that, uh, that 540 in, uh, in uh, Korea was, was definitely one of them. Um, and I think also the first time I got on an Aaron style podium, was in uh, I won the junior jam in 2011 I think it was at US Open No no or it was a, it was Aaron an style Aaron style, style oh, junior contest so it was uh, it was like Jamie Nichols Pat Bergener me and a couple other dudes and then I ended up uh, winning that and that got you like a ticket back to the big contest the, the following year but there was this dude who got injured so they gave me a spot that same year and I ended up getting like fourth or something which was insane How old uh, I was like 18 or something, like 20 maybe. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I was super stoked on that. So, so you're strapping in next to the big dogs, at Aaron Style. Yeah, it was insane. Like the like literally my idols. That's a good feeling. Yeah. Just for shits and gigs, who would you pick as your uh, Siamese twin? I think that's, that's a good question. question. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of not a lot of people I can spend. And like extended amount of time with, without going crazy. Um, so like in the industry, that dude is stolid. We've lived together and traveled together for like ten years. So I'd probably beat the shit out of him a couple of times, but <laughs> but like that's probably the one dude that I think I could tolerate the most. So I'd have to have a dude like Harrison, someone who just wouldn't care what was going on. Yeah. No matter what's going on, <laughs> he's good just logic. down for the ride. Yeah, that's good logic. Always happy. Mm-hmm. He might not be that stoked on my pick. But I feel like if you guys, you and Harrison were Siamese twins, you'd be like, yeah, like, come on, like, let's hang out with Bud and, and Harry. <laughs> like, there's a great combo pack. It's a great combo pack. Work. Uh, we have a guest question, and this is from your team manager, and uh, it's also sounds like it's in reverse. Here we go. What's up, Bombhole? What's up, Chris? What's up, Easton? Canute here. Um, so thanks for asking me to ask a question. I am so nervous right now it's because the bomb hole is the shit. It's the hottest thing in snowboarding. This shit is bananas. Thank you from myself and all the snowboarders out there. Thanks, exactly Kenny. What we want exactly what we need. Let's get to the question. I heard you got the homie Toy get in the booth right now. So I'm going to ask him a little question in Norwegian because he, uh, I guess it's kind of a Norwegian matter. Toy get? Hello? Alright. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Looking forward to see this episode, and thank you again, Bombhole community. You guys are the best. Bye. Wow, that really does sound like a record in reverse. Yeah, yeah, that was a long question. <laughs> <laughs> two, two questions actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought I heard a Grendy's in there, but I'm not sure. I don't know. You did. I did. Yeah, you did. Um, what's actually pretty funny is Knut has a super American accent on his Norwegian. Really? Yeah, 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 He's been yeah, here yeah, too yeah. long, yeah, yeah. huh? But, uh, yeah, he asked me um, why I quit the team right now before the Olympic season and what I'm going to be doing. And uh, we've been talking a bunch about this, but um, but um, I talked to Sage about it the other day, and he was like, dude, you finally graduated. So that's what – that's always been the dream. Graduate to the back country. Graduate yes. the contest scene. Yeah, like Sage did. Exactly. So, like, I've been competing my entire life, and the dream has always been to shoot the film video parts. To like go out in the backcountry and, and do some like gnarly kickflip shit. your sled maybe. exactly. <laughs> Just, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's all part of it. Yeah, exactly. But um, so yeah, I'm gonna be filming a bunch. Um, 
the plan right now is to be based out of here uh, for the next couple of years and uh, try and film some crazy stuff. Wow. Are you going to be going out with Sage? What's your, what's your That's plan? the plan, yeah. Oh, a couple big dogs Ooh. trying to eat. Okay. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're going to team up this season, and uh, hopefully that goes well, and then we'll take it from there. Are so, you guys got a project in the works? That uh, it's kind of up in the air still, Sluice but, still? but uh, yeah, we're definitely going to just try and get out there and get after it. Saw a session with these guys on Pyramid Gap this year. It was uh, heavy hitters. So these guys all season is going to be... A little out of control. A couple huh? goofy footers uh, chuck and roast. Chuck there, and roast. Say. That'd be kind of interesting, though, because we, like, we we do a lot of the same tricks. Mm. So, like, if we get to a jump, it's definitely going to be, like, it's who's, doing, be like, yeah, who's who, doing this uh, on this jump? You know? on cab nine. Yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. That's well, going to be some super guys, sessions. Uh, if you guys need a sponsor, potentially run through a wall smelling salts. Good sponsor. Oh, yeah. There we go. Hype you I actually want to try one of those. I've never tried it in my life. We can arrange oh. that. Yeah, we should definitely try it. Let's, let's do it right now. Okay, we had to run out to the car and grab some uh, run through a wall smelling salts for those who don't need doors. Now, uh, luckily, we have one left. Now, what you want to do here with this is crack it. Crack it and snap it. Snap it and sniff it. Snap and, and sniff. Uh, you, you squeeze it, and then you just give it a big old whiff, and then send it over to us. The so, old so snap you, and sniff. You just, no, like, no, you just squeeze it. It's going to turn a color. Yeah. And then you, like... Squeeze it right in the middle. Squeeze it. And then give it a big sniff. And, and then... Yeah, big whiff. Whoa! Not that big! Not that big! Not that big! Not that big! Oh, oh, wow. Oh. Okay. Oh! Hot <laughs> ah, damn! Run it through walls in here. Yeah. God, Jesus. Dude. What do I do with this thing now? Uh, dude, you know what's so funny? Dude, he looks like he's getting kind of zapped. He, yeah. He's, he's getting uh, zapped from the run he, through a wall. He went hard. Jesus. Another one. He's got to get in the mix with the boys. Yeah. You know, he's got to do it for the boys. It's, yeah, you got to do it right. If you're going to do it, If do you're going right. to do it. I love that. You know? Uh, it's funny. I was just... We just moved out of my garage, and we're in this new studio, and it was a... Uh, it was a run through a wall smelling salt graveyard all over the floor. There had to be like <laughs> oh, underneath. There had to be like twenty five <laughs> old dingers on the ground. <laughs> Basically, every time we sit at the booth, we're just smelling it, anyways. <laughs> That's beautiful. I think it might be time for some hot takes. Ooh, I love it. Um, so we always start off with um, both male and female MJ or and or goat of snowboarding. Who you got? Ooh. Um. That's a tough one. It's like definitely like generational for sure. But uh, I mean, when I grew up, uh, when I started competing, like Andreas and Torstein were the shit. So like, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and say Torstein, dude. That's a great answer. I I don't know if we've gotten that one yet. I want to say maybe once, but I'm not sure. Maybe not. You know what's cool? If you look at his contest results over the, it's like it, I remember when we interviewed him. It was like fucking two pages of like. Mm -hmm. X Games golds and everything else. It, insane. That yeah. dude, he won everything, dude. He did. It's a great answer. Okay, who you got for female goat? Uh, ooh, that's a big one, too. Uh, uh, I guess, like, if I'm going to go contest on that one, too, I'm going to have to go Jamie Anderson. Yeah. I think that's probably the correct answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, love that. She's. she's I, like, I like Zoe, though, coming up. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's going to have a strong future, huh? Oh, yeah. She's the future, MJ. Yeah. Also, uh, worst trend. What do you got? Uh, Like the folding up the pants. Like people who fold up their pants like above their boots. I don't get what's going on with that. You had another one in the Patreon I really liked. Oh, the, the yeet and the freaking, <laughs> uh, what else? Like no cap and all that bullshit? I don't know what that means, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what that means. You got to stay up with the current slang, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just urban. That's true, but I also have to words. keep up with Norwegian slang, dude. I got two two worlds of slang that I got to keep up with. It Does yeet even time. have a meaning? It's like kind of like a like you're like a yeah. I, I, actually, you know what? I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know. No. Uh, you know what you do? With the, I thought you, know you do was just things. like a noise you're making in you, a rap song. You know what you do. You, you say them even if you don't know what they mean, just to get in the mix. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean, you just kind of throw it out there. Yeah, maybe it's in the, the wrong, mix. You got to just say. Maybe them. it's the wrong context. You know, you're like you just kind of throw out no cap, even though you have no clue what it means. Yeah, 
What does no, it mean? No it means cap, no lie. Yeah, no, no, lie. Lie. no lie. Got it. But yeet, let's find out if yeet actually has a meaning. I think it's kind of like a, an expression of... Uh, an know, exclamation excitement. of... In, yeah, like, that's it. Yeah. Enthusiasm, approval, triumph, right. pleasure, Okay, Joy. yeet, no yeet. cap. Like yeet. if you land your sick trick, we're all yelling, yeet, yeet. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not as high as that, though. Yeet. You know what I uh, I like to hit is like a little woo. Yeah. Know? When Ooh. somebody lands... Yeah. But I have a friend named Woo, so every time he lands something <laughs> skating, he thinks I'm saying his name. <laughs> My boy, he's Woo- like, huh? <laughs> yeah, he's like, what? What do you want? Woo-gy? I'm like, no, you just, I'm excited about your trick. Yeah, so it's um, just more like hollering. Best, yeah. best, but advice, no caps got a meaning. Best advice you've ever received, or, uh, yeah, uh, definitely just like try your best at whatever you do. Uh, if you're gonna do something, like put your put your all into it, and like uh, he just did with the smelling salts. Yeah, yeah. he like, went deep on it. Yeah, if you if you if you're gonna do something, don't half-ass it. That's always, always a great uh, lesson all across the board. So we have uh, one last and final guest question from your GOAT. Greetings, Bombhole Squad. This is Torstein checking in. And uh, Turgay, Trinder in the booth. I've got a question for you. Uh, I know you've always been on it in the way you approach uh, cross-training and getting ready for the season. Um, I remember when we first started hanging, I was freaking blown away of how insanely strong you were. And I think it shows in your style and riding as well. Um, anyways, do you remember TCB? If so, what that period was like for you and, um, where you're at now with off snow, uh, training, uh, I think the listeners would be interested in this, uh, on the fitness side of things. Anyways, congratulations on a banger career so far, and I can't wait to see what's next for you. Uh, thanks, guys. Right on. In the words of Zach Hale, washboard abs, he did say. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I've been injured so much that uh, going to the gym has, has kind of become like uh, like an everyday thing. Uh, if I don't do it, I feel like shit. Uh, and if I, and then when I do it, it like makes me feel good. So, so uh, it's kind of just like become a part of my my life uh and like a big part of my life because it's just like the more like the like if i'm in shape at the beginning of the season i'm gonna have a way better season than if i like just party and eat shitty food and don't go to the gym you know so like whatever i can do to stay like healthy and good longer and to be able to snowboard longer days more days in a row i'm gonna do it like I'm not I'm not gonna sit on the couch and watch TV because that's what I want to do that exact moment. I'm gonna go out and like and go for like a like a ten mile run or or go to the gym and do like my like balance like all like the shit that prevents me from getting injured and you know all of that shit you know so so that's kind of become like if I have a good preseason I'm gonna have a good season too you know what I mean so and. uh what he's talking about the the, the um, TCB stuff is when we we went to Encinitas and uh, we stayed there for a couple of months in the fall preseason, and we were working out together every single day, surfing twice a day, going to the gym, and just getting after it, and it was insane. Like, Taking care of business, oh, TCB. Yeah. It was it was really sick, uh, and I was pumped that Torstein kind of invited me to go and took me under his wing and like brought me out to SoCal and like we worked out together taking care of business the, uh, Marcus was his name the dude's like ex military guy like pre- like personal trainer dude insane so sick and i've never felt better going into a season than i did in 2012 on so. top of surfing twice a day too the i mean a natural workout yeah yeah we got pretty jacked when we were in Encinitas yeah it was sick for sure. So that's something I think it's cool for our listeners to hear because how dedicated to your craft you are. You know, it's like you want to be able to do the 14s and the 16s and the switchback five methods. It's like, you know, you guys put in work. You guys work hard at the gym. Now, our listeners always kind of ask what specifically, you know, if you had to recommend maybe uh, two or three things that, that benefit snowboarding wise at the gym, what do you think? Sticks uh, out for that. Well, I definitely think that uh, mobility is a big thing. If you like stretch and do your mobility work, then then you're gonna be a lot less prone to get injuries. You know, like because your body's more nimble, and this like the stiffer you get, 
the easier you break. You know, if you don't bend, you break. Mm -hmm. So, so that's a big one. And definitely to do some strength work, like do some squats and do all that stuff just to get your like foundation going. Uh, Cause you're going to take hits. Like when you land on a big jump, it's like, that's a lot of force, you know? So you're going to have to be able to do that. And then when you initiate tricks too, you're going to have to, you got to get some torque in there, dude. So, so definitely strength work and mobility is, are, are two big ones. And, uh, I like to do a bunch of cardio and like, and I like run a bunch too. It's kind of like, like a hobby cotton thing lately. So just like get your endurance up because if you have good cardio and you're in good shape, you're going to be able to take longer days and more days in a row, which means you're going to get more time snowboarding. You're going to get better. It's not like you're not, it's not the one crazy thing that you do. That's going to like make you better. It's like the marginal adjustments that you do every day. That's going to like make the difference in the long run. Like the, the, like the 15 extra minutes you put in at the gym every day, that's going to be the difference. You know, it's consistency is more important than just ha doing it for a quick amount of time and building those patterns. And what effect, cause I, I know speaking for me, like it's a huge part mentally yeah. ideas and, and all that stuff. Like mentally it, it is huge for my clear headedness. Would you say that has a similar effect for you? Oh, definitely. Well, most definitely. It's so like, if you like, get your endorphins going and I like, clear your head, you you're like you're ready to to take on whatever the day it throws at you, you know, mm -hmm. in in a like a completely different way than if you don't do anything. Now I heard uh, you a note from Sage, uh, some type of uh, strength test in Norway, uh, and Lance Armstrong's bike. What's what's <laughs> going on with that situation? <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, so that was kind of a bet that my team, uh, like the team manager for the Norwegian team, made that if anyone podium at the olympics in 2014 he was going to do a bike race which is essentially a 320 uh, ish mile bike race um in one go so it's like a 24 close to like all day it's like a 24 hour yeah. start at like four in the morning or something yeah so we started at 11 p.m so, so so what what happened was we were at a dinner like a sponsor dinner with like dnb the bank you know like that's yep. like the the team sponsor and then the dude who was like the marketing director for that bank, he was like, well, if you're going to do that bike race, like we have Lance Armstrong's old bike sitting around because that was like just after he got busted for doping oh, and they shit. bought that bike at an auction for like, I don't know, like a hundred grand or whatever. <laughs> and then they had the bike at the office and it's like, all right, it's not worth anything anymore, but it's still a fucking sick bike. You know? <laughs> so, oh, Cause he got caught doping. It's not worth anything. Yeah, no, exactly. Like the, the sentiment, the sentimental value or whatever yeah. that like that's gone, but it's still like a 10 grand Dope bike, bike. Yeah. 12 grand bike. So, so he said like, yeah, if you want to, if you want to use it, uh, go for it. So he gave me that bike <laughs> and then, uh, I did that race with my dad, my brother, my uncle, my cousin, and a couple of other homies. We were 11 people and, uh, we started at 11 PM in Trondheim where I'm born or not where I grew up. And, uh, and we biked all the way to Oslo which Holy is shit. 540 kilometers, which is 300 something miles, 21 hours and 13 minutes or something. Wow. And yeah. so for training for that uh, question, number one, I have uh, to keep the tradition alive. Did you do any doping to uh, just kind of <laughs> keep the tradition alive <laughs> with the bike? With your did boy you do a little bit of juicing or <laughs> <laughs> find some steroids? Yeah, should have, should have no, for uh, sure. I would have uh, recommended doing that. Yeah. They don't test. But. Clean diet. Oh, you. So uh, for training for those type of things, you got to start by doing like a couple hundred miles a week. Is that what you did to build up for it? That was I was supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you went off the couch? Yeah, no, no I went like I went and did my, my like snowboard more like snowboard specific stuff. So I was like I was in the gym uh, doing all that stuff, and uh, and I just biked maybe like fifty miles a week, um, something like that. And they say that you need to do at least like eight hundred miles or close to a thousand miles like altogether before you go do that race. Uh, and I think I had like 350 or something. Damn. Like <laughs> it was just like, I, I, I was not ready at all. But, um, so my body kind of shut down 
Uh, did you I, shit yourself? A lot of people shit themselves. I thought I did. Okay. So uh, when we got close to Oslo, I uh, was going to release some wind, just fucking crap my pants. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> literally. He's like... Release <laughs> like, literally, wind. I thought I crapped but my pants. But you didn't. And then I got like... I walked... When we got there to Oslo, I walked straight into the shower, full gear on, and then just like, all right, what's the damage? Like, pull the shorts down. Nothing. <laughs> Really, ghost shit. Yeah, Literally it's crazy, nothing. Ghost shit. I Dude, can't believe you had a ghost shit. It's insane. His body was probably running so lean. I, it was full like, ghost shit. It was probably just like water, maybe. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, like a clear, yeah. A clear. Yeah, you were so hydrated, maybe. Yeah. It was insane. I ghost, was like, I pulled him down. I was expecting the worst fucking diaper. Because you were full in the shower. Shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I like I sat on it for like three hours before oh I got there too. God. So I was like, fuck, dude, this is gonna be gnarly, but nothing. Yeah, Literally, your body nothing. just gives out, huh? When it when it's done, it's done. Yeah, it was done. I I had like it was gnarly. I like I couldn't feel my like left pinky toe for a week. <laughs> I had like shooting like pains down my neck, and like my knee was all fucked up. You and, went like, too far. Yeah, my hands didn't like my fingers didn't work. So when I went to like break, I had to like use my whole hand, and so it was crazy. Did yeah. you get a crazy like runner's high type of thing at all? Did any of that happen, or is it just Suffer Fest two thousand nine? Well, it's like both because yeah. it's so long. That mm-hmm. it's like you're like it's so like such an uh, such a roller coaster, you know. Mm-hmm. You get to know yourself pretty mm-hmm. well. Like, how do you deal with long term pain? You know, like it's <laughs> and just, you didn't give up. Huh? No, we didn't stop. We we stopped like we stopped. I think four or five times to just to like repack our like like rebottle, like get some new like more drinks and more food. Nobody I had like wanted fifty to give packets up. of food with me. Nobody wanted to give up, and no, everyone got there. Crazy. Mm-hmm. Not one flat tire, no injuries, no like nobody like fell off their bike. We got we got there, everybody, which Crazy. was freaking sick. That's awesome to have a dad to look up to that does that type of stuff. Oh too, yeah. Because then you're like, oh I can it's like inspo. You can do it when you're older and Yeah. Dude, he he's done it in fifteen and a half hours. Holy shit. Just pinned. Yeah. They Damn. like pinned. Crazy. They had two stops, sixty seconds each. Just like three stack and then you fucking you go. Yeah. <laughs> Insane. Your dad's a beast. He kind of seems like a bit of a problem. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kid's a problem. Kid is a problem. So also I heard you're getting into marathon running. Is that um, I actually did my first marathon uh, two, two, three weeks ago. Yeah. How'd it go? Uh, it went pretty well for my first marathon, I think. I ran in uh, uh, three hours and 11 minutes. Damn. That's fast. So uh, I was like trying to go sub three, but then on mile like 23, like my leg just cramped up. I just couldn't run. So. Damn. I had to like almost walk, but um, kind of jogged in to three three eleven or three twelve, which was like I'm still like super stoked. It's yeah, like it's uh, not a bad. What's time. the average mile for that? Uh, I'm not good at the the average mile. I'm, I do kilometers. Mm. Oh yeah. So we, it, we do it, things that don't make sense in the states yeah. here. That don't. So yeah. Cams. So it's it's like a, it's like a four twenty nine kilometer, which is like maybe like close to a seven maybe like a 645 or something are you and sage gonna knock some of these things out he loves that shit yeah i think we might go head to head oh wow at one point not like not anytime soon can but we get it's, it's it's happening probably can we get a little gambling racket going for that yeah head to head that sounds good <laughs> yeah whoever we sponsors or you know who we get our money behind we get some smelling salts we get some <laughs> steroids yeah you know we'll be on the else. sidelines with smelling salts mm-hmm. yeah cracked ready for you not mm-hmm. water smelling salts <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> No, we haven't talked about it, but it's bound to happen at some point. It's going to happen. Yeah, Yeah, that's awesome. So uh, I also heard a little situation where you're uh, looking into doing some business school or you're in it right now. Uh, I'm actually, uh, I have one year left on my bachelor's in marketing. Oh, damn. Yeah. Nice. So you're kind of a, you're your own marketing uh, machine. (laughs) Right. (laughs) (laughs) You're kind of testing your theories on yourself. Yeah, exactly. No, it's, uh, (laughs) it's pretty, like, it's pretty cool. Like you, like you, like learn that you already know a bunch of shit mm-hmm. from being a snow warrior, you know, mm. like, cause you work with marketing people for 15 years. So you pick up a thing or two, you know? So it's cool. I don't really have to study that hard and I still get like decent grades, which is cool. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's nice to have something else to think about too, you know, cause there's a lot of free time when you're traveling and, and like you can sit down and watch Netflix and jerk off, but like you can also try and learn something. Study on the road. And yeah, maybe that. a balance of all three. Yeah, yeah. balance. <laughs> I got a Patreon question that follows into this, I guess, from Jake Snyder. Is there a story behind Sleepy Torgear Instagram page? Yeah. 
Is that part of your big marketing scheme? Oh, uh, no, that's definitely <laughs> a, a part of Stale's big marketing scheme for me. Um, he, uh, <laughs> so he started taking photos of me because I was sleeping a lot in the daytime. So he started taking photos of it, and uh, he made an Instagram. Uh, and uh, he didn't tell me about it for six months. <laughs> <laughs> He's just paging and posting secretly. And oh, yeah. Snapping these photos. Yeah, exactly. So uh, he, like, six months, like, we went. So he started doing that in the summer. And then we go to Australia. And then we come back. And then we're on the couch because we were living together at the time. And he's just like, hey, I got to show you something. And then I'm like, what? So yeah, I got, like, an Instagram <laughs> page I made. And then it's just, like, 40 photos of me just, like, passed out on the couch, like, in the car, just <laughs> everywhere, dude. And then he opened it up, and he got, like, 5,000 followers. I was going to ask how many <laughs> followers, more than a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. You're yeah. a big napper then, huh? Yeah, I like to nap. My dad to to always, like, told me that I'd be a good soldier because I can sleep when I have to, you know? Like, I can sleep on command almost. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. like, a big skill to have is, like, be able to take 20 and just be able to actually yeah, rest exactly. up. And mm -hmm. I, t I was always told that uh, Kazu is really good at that in the backcountry. He can just like be on a snowmobile and sleep all hunched over and then still grab the handle. Yeah, like Holt just sits there sleeping and then he wakes up and goes and kills it, comes back, and then you'll see him napping again. Yeah, that's probably just, his secret. Yeah. Why he's so freaking good. If you always has that energy. There's a great analogy Mike Graff had on the show. He likens uh, rest to a slingshot. That the more rest you have, the more you're able to pull back the slingshot and unleash. Because whenever you're not rested, think about that. You're if you're in a state of stress, you're not you don't have the energy to fucking chuck roast uh, switchback five method, for example, you know? Uh, so I think rest is important. Yeah. They That's teach a good military way people too, to be able to like, you have to be able to sleep on a plane or a car ride. And yeah. they teach you how to fall asleep within like 10 minutes. I think it's like a military skill to have. Sick. So I don't need yeah. that training. Yeah. You can just fall asleep. That. You already yeah. passed that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I also think about, it's an interesting one. Like some, if you think about my favorite snowboarders, a lot of them, they sleep so well they're like so like danimals for example well rested. danimals is so well rested all the time he's like doesn't get up early he's like sleeping in and then he just goes and fucking destroys you know kazu tour gear god damn maybe we should start showing up at uh you know 1 p.m at the bomb hole and just <laughs> we gotta set these bunk beds up <laughs> in the back room and just nap when yeah, naps are needed you get a piss break get a sleep break <laughs> yeah. yeah all right everyone take 20 now <laughs> That'd be good. We dim the lights in the <laughs> yeah. whole office and everyone's napping. Mm -hmm. I Not like bad. that. So uh, we like to talk about setups. Let's talk about, you don't have it with you currently, uh, but what is your board setup? What do you like to ride? How do you set it up? I ride a Nitro Beast 158 snowboard. It's the uh, stiffest park board that Nitro makes. Um, and we designed it together with uh, Aero Etela, Marcus Cleveland, and, and Sven Torgren. Uh, we uh, just wanted to make an aggressive park board that'll kind of take you where you need to go. Uh, and uh, I ride it with a Team Pro bindings, which is a kind of a stiffer version of the Nitro Team bindings, and a boot called uh, the Capital, which is the stiffest boot that they have. So I'm running a pretty stiff setup for sure. What are the benefits of riding a stiff setup? Well, I it like it supports you really well so like if you land like my big thing is like if i land a little tail heavy my board's going to pull me back in so like it's not going to be like a noodles as to where i just like fall on my ass if i land a little bit like tail heavy so that's kind of the big deal and then the side cut too is like it's a pretty big side cut on it so it doesn't like when you go fast it's not going to like fling you in any direction you know so if you go up a jump and you're on your edge with a lot of side cut you might just get boomerang hook yeeted to the side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no but cap, yeah. son. Yeah, exactly. It might get yeeted. Uh, what about your bindings? How do you how do you like to set those bad boys up? Uh, I go um, zero on the back foot and then 15 on the front. Forward lean? No, nothing. Nice. Edges, and razor sharps? Yep. Razor sharps. I don't sharp. do anything with my edges ever. And then I go... Forearm, fists, and two fingers. That's the width of my stance. Four. Wait, say that again. Oh, wow. You, Whoa. You go, wow. Like, so my elbow to my knuckles, forearm, closed fist, and then two extra fingers. That's my. That's how I like wide. Like to get I some go. measuring tape on that. Yeah. <laughs> See where we're at. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. <the laughs> Different in, That's the inside of my mining. <laughs> that's awesome. Like, every time. Yeah. I don't need measuring tape. I don't need like. I don't know how wide it is. 
But that's, that's a pro just, tip. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's literally a pro tip. That's literally awesome. You could figure it out anywhere if you just yep. do your whatever your thing is. I think a, a lot of our listeners love talking about setups, and I think one thing to be noted is, is that like a stiff board is for the type of riding you do. Is you're hitting big ass park jumps, you're hitting big ass backcountry jumps, and a stiffer board is much more stable. Now, I do think as you're depending on your level, you want to start with the softer board an easier way in because if you get on one of those things yeah. and you're hitting a five foot jump it's too much yeah, you it's might too have a rough aggressive time, right? it's too aggressive so yeah. like it's kind of just just kind of prefacing what you said with like that's kind of a, a top of the skill set a giant half pipe they want yeah. a stiff board yeah yeah def- i don't recommend buying the beast if you're just getting into snowboarding mm-hmm. i'd recommend buying a, a softer board but it's like when you go and like kind of try and like step to the big boy stuff and like go off the big jumps and go fast mm-hmm. Then that board just got your back all day. And stability is huge for taking off on a big jump. Yeah. You want that shit to be under your board, stable. Exactly. No speed wobbles. So before we get out of here and uh, put a bow on this thing, uh, we want to know what's next for Tour Gear. What's going on? Yeah, as we like uh, talked about earlier, I like, just graduated from competing. Uh, I'm going to get in the backcountry and uh, learn. Uh, there's definitely going to be a, a big learning curve for me. So uh, I'm stoked on that. Uh, I'm really excited to see what we're going to be able to do. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep snowboarding until my legs can't carry me anymore. Beautiful. Uh, do you have any big goals that you haven't achieved yet that um, you can think of that you want to do? Yeah, I mean, I want I want a video part that I can, like, look back on as, like, I gave that my all. Kind of like, this is, like, this is as good of a video part that I'm, able to like produce you want your picasso yeah you want to go hard all season i want to go hard Give it everything yeah your great white buffalo yeah i don't want to leave every, anything on the table I you know what we call that that's called chasing the dragon right mm-hmm. there yeah you start doing that and you might it not ever get ends. there yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like a drug addict yeah one more hit. Come yeah on. you always want that next video part then because you want that feeling again yeah exactly no i mean i mean like i really want to like get after it now which was yeah i hope uh well, I mean, I do know that I have a good crew to yeah, get me out there. So so it's all up to me. Killer. Well, uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Torgir, thanks for – I'm going to say Torgir. <laughs> I'm going to say Torgir. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for coming on the show. And uh, we will see you guys next week over and out from the bomb hole.